Play Alexa. Play WVON 1690 AM. Getting WVON 1690 AM station from iHeartRadio. Try it out for yourself. America is listening. Crawford, what up, Deborah Roberts? Robert Dickinson. Did y'all see me get plagiarized? No, Tribune put it in writing.
I really wish they would stop invoking Harold Washington. Just elect Richard. Plagiarized by the Chicago Tribune. Check me out. Y'all got plagiarized by the Chicago Tribune, straight up. Like, they straight hijacked my shit. Like, yo, like, I did this, this, look, like, literally. Do you see that? Do you see that? I did that in October. They released theirs yesterday. Seriously. Think about the gravity of that. The light one is the one that they did on Saturday. The black one is the one that I did in Octo on October 11th of 2019. Straight jacket. You know what? When I do that, Sonya, you should play jacking for beats. Uh oh. Can you close that door?
top. Wake up, Chicago! Wake up, world! This is the WVOM Morning Show. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stranger. Todd, how you feeling this morning? Oh, man, I feel that right. You know what? Things sound really good in the headphones. Everything is all, hmm, sounds like a good, could be a good, good, good Monday. Uh, You know what, Todd? You said, wait, Todd, how'd you say you were doing? All right. All right. <laughs> well, you know, I got a little back pain right here. For those in, in uh, radio land, that's my lower uh, right back. That's your lower right back. Yeah. Do you, you best, were you walking by Mary Flowers? Did she punch you too? <laughs> <laughs> no, Mary did not punch me. We have a very good relationship. You do? I thought I had a good relationship until, you know, she be, you know what, Ty? It, I, we got to talk. We got to talk. We got so much to talk about today. Uh, this you, you feel bad in your back of your lower back. I feel kind of bad in my left kidney. I got elbow. Yeah, man, I got elbowed in my left kidney this week. I'm gonna tell you about what happened while I was out. You know, it seems like every time I put on my good clothes, somebody always wanna do some dumb dumb, some dumb stuff. You know what? Oh, and this is Friday then. This was Friday night. I had my tuxedo on out with my beautiful, lovely wife, and I was accosted, assaulted by a staff oh, member from I read this somewhere. from the alderman's office, uh, from the third ward alderman's office, and we're going to talk about it because you know, Todd, I this had this is a repeat assault. This is a repeat assault. We're going to talk about it because I really, you know, Todd, my thing is, I really am trying hard not to do damaging things to black people. Like I really am. Like I, if you noticed, I really haven't called. Alderman Dow, Rat Dow. I didn't, you know, I, over this last few months, I've been chilling. Even after the, um, even when she sold us out on the, on the cannabis thing, right? When she came right. in and tried to under, remember, I didn't snap off. Remember, I was just like, you know what? Let's call Alderman Dow and encourage her positively. Remember, remember, I was trying to be like positive, like. I really was. Like, I really haven't called her name. I remember, you know, you know, at city council, she called me into a room and said, I didn't have anything to do with it, blah, blah, blah. I was like, stop fronting. But you know what? I said, you know what? We don't have to agree, but I'm going to be peaceful. Right? Man, my, my thing is I'm trying to build black positive stuff. You know, and even as people come after my wife and say crazy stuff, remember, we got fools that get on the... We're going to talk about it all today because... You know, Todd, I'm I'm really getting frustrated with trying to fight for black people and fighting through black people to get to try and help black people. And I just thought, first of all, I think it's really ignorant of a public servant, someone who works, who represents a staff person, represents a an elected official. Like I'm a constituent. You do realize my business is in the third ward. Yeah, right. And I was I was accosted by the the staff person that welcomes the people. So how should I? I wonder how the mayor. You're man than me. I, well, let's talk about it because I don't know if I am. I just it's like I'm trying to be a good black man, and it's like we're gonna talk about it. Hey, but let's do this. Let's let's because you know what you don't want to get me on ten before I even get to two. Yeah. Right. So let's do this. Let's say what's up to the rest of the WVON Morning Show team. What's up to Miss Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom? Jennifer, how are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling well. How about you? I am. You know what? I'm feeling some kind of way today. So you know it's gonna be one. It's gonna be one today because I'm feeling. I'm still. I'm still stinging because I again, Todd. When I'm out with my wife, dressed up. In a suit and tie, we are, yeah, I, I feel some kind of way. Yeah, uncouth, classless, um, and you know what? We're going to talk about it all. I'm and always uh, ready to fight when I feel like somebody's going to break it up eventually. Uh, nah, well, see, <laughs> but see, here's the thing. I think the challenge is, you know, women, I I am not ever in a, I'm never going to put my hands on a woman. Never. Oh, wow. 
Ever, never, ever. And so people take but advantage of right cross. She, man, you know what? It's like I, I guess I'm gonna have to press super extra charges and get the tape. But I feel like that that's one of them things women do. What if she's actually good at this? To try jamming people up, right? A woman knowing that what am I supposed to do? Right? So you still on me, am I gonna hit you back? No. Right? Am I gonna do something? And and then if you do something, then you know they'll try and play crazy and they you know how it works. I'm old. We're going down to the ground. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe Todd, you'll have to be my security. Let's do this stuff. Let's say what's up to the rest of the WVON Morning Show. Because, you know, I've had offers for everybody to do everything. And it's like that. Again, it's like me trying to be Maze Jackson who wants to bring black people together. I have to literally call people. Because, you know, I got a bunch of girls. You want to be something. I got a bunch I of girls. <laughs> I got a bunch of girls on deck with ponytails. That long. <laughs> you know the kind? Yeah, the one that you if they once they wrap the scrunchie around it, yeah. it's on that's all it's the scrunchie that's and a little bit. It. And they you know, they be like, they did what? Mm -hmm. And it's like, but you know I'm not on that. It's like I really honestly want to do positive things. But I think if the alderman ain't gonna check their staff, then we're gonna have to do something, you know, greater. Cause again, I, I I'm gonna tell y'all, y'all y'all pay attention. I'm concerned for my safety, but I, I feel like I got black people. But here's the other part. It's like, Ty, it's like I left the lady alone. Like, I literally, even under the Cannabis Act, I, I didn't go, no names, no nothing. I let it be. We had a disagreement. I asked people, and then your staff going to come. You know, we're going to talk about it because I took pictures. You know, we took pictures. Hey, y'all, it's Top Chicago 1690. Got to say what's up to Miss Sonia Escobar, the, the, the musical conductor of the Soul Play. Sonia, how you feeling this morning? Let's get it, stop. Oh, 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 oh. I got my MC hammer on. You know I'm ready. You said that commercial, right? Oh. <laughs> Man, his hair was terrible, though. <laughs> okay, y'all. This is Top Chicago 1690. Wake up, because I'm going to dedicate a little time to this. But it won't be this morning, because we got a lot of headlines to get to. Plus, we got to get to 50,000 feet. And we got to talk to Amisha Cross. It's the WVOA Morning Show. We'll be back after the traffic and the weather. More of the Morning Show with Mays Jackson coming up. So... Then, Todd, I'm going to tell you my story. So can I tell the story? I'm going to tell it on air at 8.30, but I'm going to tell you in a minute. Let me go get some okay. of though, because I think this is a good one. Um, Take Maze, give you Sonia. Todd, you have the camera. Welcome back. This says it was written by a Baltimore student. It's Cause I Ain't Got a Pencil by Joshua T. Dickerson. I woke myself up because we ain't got an alarm clock. Dug in the dirty clothes basket. Hey, everybody. Cause, hey, man, I read the poem. Cause ain't nobody washed my uniform. Brushed my hair and teeth in the dark cause the lights ain't on. Even got my baby sister ready cause my mama wasn't home. Got us both to school on time to eat a good breakfast. What's this? Then when I got to class, the teacher fussed cause I ain't got a pencil. <coughs> it's a poem. <laughs> It's pretty good. Who wrote it? I like it. It says it was written by a student in Baltimore Public Schools. I guess a high school student. I should have had Carrie give me the picture so I could have put it up. Also, I was plagiarized by the Chicago Tribune. Yeah. All right. So, here we go. Here we go. Come on. Here we go. All right, so, Todd. Mm -hmm. Here's what happened. Carrie and I went to the um, First Look for Charity auto show event that Jesse White throws every year. Um. So obviously, you know, you get all dressed up, you go to the event. And you know, I don't I it, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, some place some places you go where it's people like they uncomfortably tolerate you <laughs> and then there's people that are just genuinely happy to see you. So yes, the what that was at when I would go to the BGA. <laughs> <laughs> so like honestly what happens is like people gravitate towards me, but elected officials are leery to displeased but when they see the response from the people 
then they can't really front on me. Right? It's like if everybody at your party is like, Mace, man, take a picture. And you become like, and I'm not saying like it. I'm the same in any way, shape, or form. But when they see that people respond to you differently than they respond to you, they get a sense that your messages resonate. Mm -hmm. So I'm clear, like sometimes, I'm not saying this at Jesse White, but I'm clear at some events I go to, and it's that way. Then there's people that I know that don't particularly care for me. Um, but I always feel like it's going to be civil. Like, you know, you don't have to like me. We can go, you know, and even if we're in the same proximity in the same room, we can tolerate each other. You know, yeah. it's like that's just the way life is. So this is the second time this broad has done this shit, though. Done some stupid shit. And what I feel like is, is the goal is to get me to do something stupid or to make my wife respond. So I'm always like, Carrie, get out of here. And you know, Carrie is like, you still my husband. I'm like, get out of here. Just move. Get out the way. Just don't. It's like, it's. I, the... I, I have to ask this. Yes. How can you still say your name? Oh, I will. Oh, I am. Because I do. I am. Oh, no, I'm going to say it. I'm just, we, we got to build some suspense. Oh, okay. Right? You know, everybody like, why you don't just say it? Oh, no, we want, we want everybody to be tuned in and listening. We want to be at peak. Because we want the alderman to... The, see, my thing is, I'm not going to fight with the staff. I'm going to just put it out and say, it's your alderman. Your alderman has people that feel comfortable physically assaulting people. Like, and I'm a resident... I mean, I have a business in the war. Right. Huh. I want to hold you till I die. Till we both break down and cry. I want to hold you till the fear in me subsides. That's another strategy that's me rattling with my pride. Can be a security and this survive. Must another writer set up within my truth a hesitant prize fighter still trapped within my youth. You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago 1698 AM. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Jackson. Got my co host, Todd Stroger. And Todd, you know, would probably go on my list of my top 50 love songs. Fifth top 50 love songs? Yeah. Like, you got 50 love songs? That I would, like, put on a playlist and would just play all the time. Oh, Janine! Janine around here, like, she probably on her way to work. She probably getting ready, like, who's in time? Yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, she like, how no, much she, time I got? No, you know what she, she says? What? That corny song! <laughs> <laughs> you know what? So I don't think I've ever met Janine. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met Janine. I gotta meet the woman who married Todd Stroger. I always tell her that she's like uh, Vera in Cheers. That's Norm's wife. We always <laughs> talk about they never talk. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go check her out, man, because she gotta be somebody special. First of all, you know, Alderman, all, no, I mean I'm saying Alderman Burnett said it the best. He was like, he was texting me. He was like, well, we know where Claire got all her, um, all her good skills. He was like, she is a genius. She is beautiful. He was like. That ain't you know she got she got all that from her mama's side. That uh, that artistic thing that's uh, that came from her her mother Janine's mother. Oh really? Her mother played the cello. She was a sculptor. She was a painter. She did all that kind of stuff. Uh, my question is, how do you become a sculptor? Like, how do you look at a big piece of granite and be like, you know what? This hammer, this chisel, we gonna turn that into David, and then with details. Now, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm not that creative. Though. I was thinking, I was thinking, uh, something wrong with Leonardo da Vinci, whoever that dude. Because you think about how he was chiseling up. Let me stop. I'm gonna <laughs> oh, wait a minute, though. But she got her, and not very much, sports ability from me. Ah, that's why she's the bowling champ. <laughs> That's why she got the most improved award. Uh, we're super proud of you, Claire, and I'm still tired. I, I got an idea, man. I'll drop the dower. You don't have to pay us a dower. <laughs> you don't have to pay us a dower. Well, we're, well, we're gonna, we gonna, we gonna, we. I'm, I'm thinking, man. Like I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out how me and May, I'm gonna get Maison to meet uh, 
I'm gonna give them to me, Claire. I'm just telling you, Todd. I'm telling you, <laughs> we gotta get these. We, you know what I was thinking? I was talking about. Does he like uh, Korean pop? Uh, oh my God! Apparently the Oscars do. With this, with Parasite winning, how about that? Like, uh, you know, Donald. I'm waiting for Donald Trump's tweet, tweets. We want like the top awards for all of the films went to a Korean foreign language film yesterday. Parasite. Yeah, yes. Parasite yes. I didn't know that. Yes. Man, yes. the Koreans are rolling. Right? The Cor- <laughs> man, they rolling all right. Look, they better roll around China, man. Keep that. Uh, keep that. Uh, coronavirus. No, oh, over there. All right. I, oh, see, that was probably racist because. You know, it's no, not that. Oh it's, it's, <laughs> no, no, you can't be scared because they was telling you. You know, like I'm gonna tell you, it's funny to me because I, you know, I, my office is right by uh, St. James, and it was like oh, yeah. ten thousand Chinese out there. Yeah, and can I tell true. you what? Like every six had a mask on, and I was like, if they got a mask on, I'm getting a mask. They don't play, and they and, and it's like we'd be racist if we do it, but they do it. They be like, shoot, I ain't trying to get sick around here, yeah. fool. All right, um, Todd, did you see me on Flannery Fired Up yesterday? I did. So, man, it's like, here's my thing. And it, and it all couples... It go real quick, though. Man, it's, it did speed by, and I didn't feel like I got to articulate really what I wanted to articulate completely. It was like, I was like, here's the process, here's how to fetch your bill and all that stuff working. And they was like, yeah, you're right, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was, there was... Mike had something he wanted... And that wasn't what you were saying. Exactly. But he, but then how about this? How about the representative McSweeney agreed that the process that I talked about, how it's like a setup to bring people down to Springfield to shake them down. He agreed. He was like, you're right. He was like, Major. It's like, it's kind of hard when you're ready to debate. But you know why he says that, though? Why? Because he's in the minority. Right. Right. right, right, right. But you know, he be asking for money, too. You know, like, my yeah, thing right. is, my thing is, I bet you, it, it, it's like all of these crises are manufactured, and it really ticks me off, because it's like, I get so frustrated that, it's like, I was trying to say, y'all want to, how do you, how do you legislate a camera and a videotape? They don't make the bribes. They don't ask for the bribes. They don't ask for the campaign contribution. Oh, you mean the companies itself? The companies, it the the legislators look for all of these. It's either you're gonna be press or cash, and it's like if they can do it right, they get both. They do the press, they get the cash, and then they do the press again, right? And it's like I, I am. And then when you saw the study that came, or the three legislative inspector generals that came out and said that realistically they can they can investigate anything, but the lawmakers will hide it from their for, for their friends because they have to refer all charges to the legislators who then say, ah, never mind, we don't need to worry about that. Think I, ser- of, I served with Tom Homer. We got to we gotta get them on the air because, again, it goes to my whole point. Like, the legislature tries to, they all sit up here in front and have these testimonies and these big hearings, and it's like, people, are, they're talking about you! They're not, they're talking about you, and it's like the legislator said, now tell me how, and explain to me, and it's like, no, they talk about you. You know how you do it. And it's so crazy to me because it's like it's wash, rinse, and repeat. It's like manufacture a crisis. Have the, your people. Nobody has accused anybody of doing anything wrong except the legislators. Like, really. The legislators and the feds hooked up the the feds got the legislators the legislators take the money and the and the fed and the legislators want to legislate everybody but them damn selves no at least in chicago you know we had that guy who was like selling cameras who uh, he, well that's john bill see that's the white guys see yeah. the white guy and then he got a job and he's and they still got his cameras though <laughs> I mean, he's in jail. He got thirty thousand dollars. He kept all the money. He went to jail for a few years. He's gonna come back. He's gonna have it all. And all the cameras are still here. And I bet you any There's money. No fine involved in that kind of stuff. I mean, they got no. I mean, they might have got fined. But Ty, here's the thing. No, I mean him. He gets to keep all the money. Ty, do you think he? He probably said, "I got, I got." Usually, was it a plea agreement or did he just go? He plead. No, no, he has to pay something. Yeah, I mean, usually when you plea, you gotta pay the money back you stole from the government. Yeah. Right, but he didn't steal the money from the government, so we'll figure it out. I'm, all I'm saying is, once again, the law was legislate. The legislate is not the company. No company says, you know what? I decide I want to make 
a hundred thousand dollars in campaign contributions a year. I love politicians so much. No, and no company says, "How about I go bribe someone?" No, what they say is, "Here's what you need to do to get me." No, that's not true. Some companies do say, "Let's go bribe that guy." But that's because they be like, "We bri well, you know what? See, but that means that they that guy already turned them on." And can I just point out one more thing? Can I point out one more thing? Sure. I need everybody to look at the Chicago Tribune on Saturday, right? The Saturday edition of Chicago Tribune. And I'm going to put up a graphic for you. On on Facebook Live, if you're watching right now, yeah, on, on Saturday, the Chicago Tribune released a, what do they call it, Key Players in Sandoval Investigation. And it was a detective string map. October 11th of 2019, I released the same map. Todd. With more detail. And I told him everything that was happening before. Can I just tell y'all something? Y'all yeah, better listen. out today but from Quentin King. Maybe it was yesterday. Who is Quentin King? Hey, I don't know who Quentin King is, but let's do this. Let's talk about it when we come back. Okay. Stock Chicago 1690. We'll be back after traffic and the weather. Who's Quentin King? That's that Q King? Yeah, Q. Okay. Man, bro, look at that. If you look at that, and the first time anybody named Victor Reyes was on set, I've been saying. And then they, I mean, literally. Oh, I remember you used to say that. Uh, it seems like forever. But look at the, I mean, but look. Did you, you say? You have a black background. They don't. <laughs> I mean, they Come put a cardboard buddy. back. They put a bulletin board <laughs> back there. <laughs> like, seriously. See, think about this. I put this exact same and better. And better. And better. Talk to Lil Todd, y'all. Because he in the shrunken chair. <laughs> all you got is This neck. is a small chair. I could not get this thing to come up, but that's all right. Your neck. You got this camera, Todd. Oh, look at that. Every time I, I look around. Oh, you, you moved it. I moved that because I'm I got the robotic cameras at my studio. Oh. Oh, it's something new, huh? Barbarossa. Dr. Jose Celes Barbarossa. Puerto Rican Afro Latino to earn a medical degree in the U.S. Uh, I, got, I got to find me a a African American fact for today. I'm sure Todd will find you a Negro fact, as he likes to call it. I had one in my head, but I forgot what it was now. It didn't stay in my head long enough. Erica Swilly, Erica Swilly, I met your twin in at Sundance. Her name was Hamida. She is the marketing director for um, a big hedge fund film company. And I kept looking at her and then I pulled her picture, your picture up on Facebook and was like, I keep looking at you because you look like this girl. And she was like, oh my God. It was like, you're literally your doppelganger. And could a brother get some Pistons tickets? What's up? All right, what's up? Um, Shout out to Alvin E. Norton. Shout out to Constance Foster. What up, Aunt Tennille? What up, Alvin E. Norton? Look, uh, Sonia Escobar. Did y'all see them copying off me? Am I crazy? Or was that that's a, that's a separate question, sir. Okay. But was that play? Did you look at the pictures? Oh, no, I didn't look at them. Are they up? Here. Well, dang. Where can I look at them? I'll look at them. I'll, uh, I'll go to wherever that is. Yeah, I'll show it to you on Facebook.
Okay. Here's mine. Right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know yours. Here's theirs. <laughs> I did a fact sheet with mine instead of putting all the details. Yeah, they definitely did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, seriously. Like, somebody should call, like, I come on, y'all. Seriously, think about this. Think about if you woke up and everybody was sharing this. And you were like, wait a minute. I did that. That looks like my work. Y'all don't want it. Y'all, y'all don't. Yeah, this is why you got to tune into the Illinois Minati podcast. You get it? Because you really want the dirt? Come to your man. Don't wait for the white folks to tell you. I be telling you that truth, but y'all got to read it from the white folks first. Is that what it is? Y'all got to hear it from the white people first, or can I tell y'all the truth and y'all listen? You can't talk about it if you ain't live it. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Josh Jojo Todd. Real quick, a few things I wanted to get some house cleaning out of the way. Uh, if you did catch me on Flannery Fired Up, um, we are launching, relaunching uh, the Illinois Minati podcast. Uh, and I feel like it's important to relaunch the podcast because Todd, when if you saw the Tribune, the Tribune basically plagiarized, in my estimation, my... Uh, map of this of the red of this Sandoval scandal um, and actually they put out the information on Saturday that I had given you in detail way back in October and so I feel like sometimes the press doesn't want to necessarily they got a story that they want to tell not the story and I also feel like oftentimes the, see I tell stories because I lived it they tell stories because they heard somebody talk about. It. You know, Jay got a line. We live where you talk about where you couldn't talk about it if you ain't live it. I'm talking about it from a real time living experience. And so, tune into the Illinois Minati podcast on Facebook Live. That's right. It will be this Thursday at 7 p.m. Where I'm gonna break it all down. Plus, tomorrow we got the What's in it for the Black People meeting every second Tuesday, 2907 South Wabash. Uh, please come on through if you are available. Three, you come on. We got dues paying members now, Ty. Dues, we dues like paying members. See, that's a real organization. Dues, $150. You want to be down, like, and don't. We, it's like, this is we. And can I tell people when they come to our meeting, don't come talking about some unga. This is a unga, a, unga black power. No, nah, we talking about black power, but we talking about the building of political power. So, this ain't right. no pontification meeting. Don't come to our stuff talking about, well, back in the days. We, we talking about how do we get power now. We want to take a piece of everything. Make sure we take care of our people. 
Um, what's in it for the black people? Window signs are now available. If you would like the red, black, and green flag with the what's in it for the black people logo in the center, backed with a black and white what's in it for the black people sign, they are available. We will be distributing them. Stop by the meeting tomorrow and you can get one for your window. Represent, let's not forget Black History Month because uh, the city of Chicago clearly has. Did y'all see I stopped by City Hall on Friday? I went live from City Hall and they was like, like the black people was like, tell them, brother. I can't be on the shot, but tell Because everybody was like, you know they got Chinese lanterns. It's Chinese lanterns all over. Tony Preck, we don't got to pop up. When's she going to hang up our flags? And Mayor Lightfoot is, you know, I went to Mayor Lightfoot's page. I don't even think she got nothing to even say Black History Month. <laughs> you know how easy it is to make a Black History Month post? Uh, yeah, it can't be that hard. It is. I if think you I don't make no, one right now. If you don't know no black, right. You don't know no black people. Oscar's so Asian. <laughs> You know, first of all, to recover from Oscars, they was like, we going to fix y'all with y'all Oscars so white. <laughs> they put all the Asians on, all the stuff, and then they gave us two black gay people to represent. We got black and LGBT, and she called it out. I'm black and I'm queer and I'm blind. And I was like, good. That Billy Porter guy is having a long life, isn't he? Man, speaking of Billy Porter, speaking of Billy Porter, Todd, perfect segue for the social media question of the day. Did you see that Billy Porter was uh, featured on on Sesame Street? I uh, No, I heard about it, but... Billy Porter was featured what on... What was he wearing? Uh, the tuxedo dress. Hmm. Remember last year he wore the, the... It was like a tuxedo at the top and then it was like a ball gown at the bottom. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He wore that. Yeah, well, to Sesame wear, Street. You can wear whatever you want. So, got my social media question of the day. Should homosexuality be introduced on Sesame Street? Oh, that's a, that's, that's, <laughs> no, that's just for sale. But that's not homosexuality. That's something, that's uh, something. Cross-dressing? Yeah, I would call it cross-dressing. So, okay, so here's my thing. All right, so let's see how to, to I be messing my stuff up sometimes. I'm sorry. Oh, so homosexuality has been I'm introduced? Well oh, Bert and Ernie? I'm a well-educated Negro. Ert and, Bert, Ert and Bernie? I mean, Bert and Ernie was gay? I think they did say that. You said that. No. The writer said that. No, he didn't say that. Yeah, he did. He Somebody said else that. said that. Okay. Bert and Ernie's not gay. <laughs> uh, but Todd, the question... I remember when that, that discussion did pop up. <laughs> so, my question is... Who are they? Laura and, uh, and Rob Petrie? They sleep in different beds. But that's okay. Go ahead. Hey, man. That's not my problem. I'm talking about <laughs> Sesame Street. I'm not, my kids don't watch. They don't watch the Dick Van Dyke show until they have to. Kids go to watch Sesame Street. You look for Sesame Street. When I was a kid, you know, when you was like, up until you was like eight, you was like, can I turn on Sesame Street? Mm -hmm. And then, you, then like when you was 10 and you still wanted to watch it, you had to play it off. Could you put on Electric Company? I was a strange kid. I didn't really watch a lot of Sesame Street. That explains a lot. <laughs> a lot. But I guess my question is, do we want our children exposed to alternative lifestyles? How about that? Mm. During, uh, on Sesame Street. Now, the reason I say that is because I feel like Sesame Street is a safe space. Right? Like, well, not... You know, you could plop a kid down in front of Sesame Street and not have to worry about nothing too much. Uh, three, uh, two of these kids are doing their own thing. Well, you know, you had Oscar the Grouch. You know, you had uh, Big Bird, Bird and Ernie. Hmm? Is, is that Kwame the Rapper? Is that, was that a squirrel? Uh, is that a squirrel? Because <laughs> Kwame the Rapper wasn't doing it when I was eight years old. I know oh. that for a fact. Oh, okay? that was on well, See, I didn't watch the right. show. Right, 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 right. So, Ty. Do it. Give us a call. 312-374-8130. Should alternative lifestyles be introduced to children on Sesame Street? Um, and the reason I say that is because what happens if the parents, let's not even say it's wrong. Let's just say what if the parents, Todd, have not had the talks with their kids about this? What if the parents are trying to shield their kids from it? Then somebody's going to say, it's not your job to shield their kids from that. In the light. Well, don't you think there's a, a, speaking of songs, a blurred line, or that someone's creating a blurred line between the difference between being a man and a woman? Uh, not in my house. Well, and not in your and house. And that's the problem. Yeah. But that's the thing. I think, like, one of the things, like, Sesame Street, you used to sit, you plop your kids down in front of Sesame Street, and then you go do your work, right? You'd be like, okay, learn your ABCs. 
Learn your colors. Learn left from right. I can leave you alone. And you'd be like, that's all good. I just think that putting your kids in front, I think parents have a certain trust level. And I just feel like, is there an age that you should introduce? Like, I don't want my son, like, I feel like if you put Billy Porter on, then the next thing you got is boys thinking it's okay to wear dresses because they seen it on Sesame Street. Not even if they gay. Right. But I seen it on Sesame Street. Hey, man, I used to do Sesame Street. I used to act out Sesame Street. Like when we would play games, Sesame Street was one of the games we would play <laughs> when we was little. Like at St. Anselm's? Oh, yeah. Like I used to be Oscar the Grouch like a mug. <laughs> and Crown Dracula. Ha! <laughs> Count. Uh, count, what was it, Count? I can't remember what it was. The Count. count. Really? Ha, 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 yeah. And then the lightning would come, and then I would get scared, and I didn't want to be him no more. <laughs> but give us a call, 312-374-8130. Lee, you on the top of Chicago, 1690. Good morning. Listen, man, I'm, a, I'm about to be your burning match this morning, and I'm going to say what you can't say. <laughs> and that is, it's wrong, man, and I'm going to tell you why. What they're trying to do is they preach it under the auspices of tolerance, right? They they trying to say, you know, you put uh, transgender and gay people on shows like Sesame Street because you're trying to keep kids tolerance. But children don't need to be taught that. You can treat that the same way as you tell a child not to laugh at a at a, at a person with a disability. You just tell them it's wrong. But I think there's a more nefarious motive to this because now I'm going to say this because I know you can't, and that is. When you choose to be, well, let's not say choose. Right. You, when you say you are gay, right? Now you make a, being gay means that literally you're going to be childless because two gay people can't reproduce. Ooh. So then what happens then though is they say, well, I got a trick for that. I'll go adopt, you know, or, 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 or I'll get artificially. So that's my thing with it. I, I don't have nothing against people who are gay. I think it's, you know, do you. But do not start dragging the children into it. That doesn't have to be added into this equation. That's my thoughts on it. So, like I said, you didn't say it, Mary. I did. <laughs> uh, you guys have a good one. Lee, thank, thank you. you. I'm, I'm going to tell you what I also think. I think you started me on. Right? Like, your parents don't necessarily agree, but the kids will be telling you, you crazy. Dad, Mom, you don't know what you're talking about. Right? And that 6, 7, 3, 2, 5, when they watching it, when your son come out and say, I want to wear mommy's dress and it's okay. They tell me on Sesame Street and you be like, well, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me stop because then that's how Kevin Hart had to make a seven-part miniseries to apologize. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys, it's the time of Chicago, 1690. We'll be back after traffic and the weather. So, Ty, what would you do if you came downstairs and Hans was in a dress? <laughs> yeah, you gotta take that off. <laughs> but you know, I mean, now at 19, uh -huh. you know, like, you can wear that, but you can't wear it here. <laughs> you wouldn't accept your child as he is? I'm not, let me stop. Yeah, I would, let me stop, let me stop, because I don't even want to go there, because I don't want to even be projecting that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to stop. Y'all see how I got that no. Billy Porter in the screen? can't get my hand around it. Todd, you have the camera. This camera. Oh! You and Billy. Number one, you have the comm. That's Star Trek talk. He wouldn't know nothing about Star Trek talk. The only problem with that camera is I can't make this thing move. No. Yep. I don't know about those questions. Man, what's up, Todd? How's it feeling, man? Mm. No, I, I don't think, uh, you know who I think the whole thing of trying to make it appear is as, as if men and women don't have some differences. Physiological? I think that's the word. It's got nothing to do with uh, who's smarter. Who can, who can run a business or a country or any of that stuff. There's just some natural differences. Uh, well, they say viva, viva la difference.
But yeah. I enjoy dressing like a man. <laughs> and then it's just a masculine thing. Oh, I know. Yeah, as opposed to when you go with a regular person as a king. Oh, is that what it was? That's why people were laying all over the car. Uh huh, because they tied them up with a regular joke game. Oh, smart. I mean, it was funny. It was funny. Like all these people were raving over my car. I played a little basketball yesterday. After the first game, I sat down, and when I got back up, I had a little weakness in my back. It wasn't like I was destroying anything. We took a week off. My problem didn't help me. I need to exercise at least four days a week at probably. High school kids are showing up. They're ruining the curve. Well, it's hard enough chasing these 38 year olds. But I was thinking, like, sitting in a car, and I'm like, oh, wow. Like, this, driving other people's cars, you realize all the shit that's in my car that you never even pay attention to. Yep. so fine and girl make me feel so insecure you're so beautiful and pure why must you be unkind tell me not how kind blowing my mind and I can't blow no I can't think of the fancy places you might want to go Still I want to get next to you You are tuned in to the Top Chicago 1690 AM I'm your host Maze Jackson Got my co-host Think he's singing something Todd Stroger Janine Janine, Janine, Janine Could you come get this man Could you come on over here Because this dude is acting up He around here singing and dancing with his rainbow shirt on oh, she think I, She's like you are just Ultra corny right now. <laughs> uh, look, some you around here like, well, go ahead, sing it, Todd. I see you hitting the falsettos, man. You know the guy who sang that for Rolls Royce said that uh, I can't remember the producer, but he's real famous. Just picked him out, and said, "Man, you're going to sing this," and he said he always wanted to do something else, but you know the whole group just fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I'm gonna tell you what. Uh, let me tell you, Ty. It is t- the social media question of the w- of the day. Of the day. Uh, should Sesame Street uh, introduce alternative lifestyles to our children? Let's go to Dio Loeb. Dio, oh, you want to talk about 1690? Abari Gunny. Abari Gunny, my brother. Uh, but look, man, I don't know if you and Perry, Perry and them, y'all get it, man. I mean, they are trying to homosexualize black people, black men in particular, demasculate black men in particular. And, and and got all these commercials coming on with these white men running around with these black children. Got all these commercials coming on with these black women with these white men being happy. That is uh, socializing our people, man, to de- to basically de-escalate who we are as black people. Bottom line. I'm going to tell you, Dio, I think that it is, um, if you read Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, um, the ISIS Papers, and you know, I some of it I'm not gonna trip out. Some of it is extreme to me, like the shape of the phallic is the gun and all that good stuff. But what I do think she really hit on hard for me was that the destruction of the black man 
is really how you destroy the race, which is why there was this infatuation during um, lynchings to always mutilate the genitals. And I think what we're seeing now is a different way to attack. Um, I think that the birth, when you increase the number of um, LGBTQ couples in our community, then the lower the birth rate is. We ain't going to have all the artificial inseminations and all the, because we ain't got the money for all that stuff. It is kind of expensive. <laughs> right. It, I mean, like, you know, and it, it, so... I, I just think that we have to be clear because I think they're socializing our children without our permission, right? Like, so what you find is that who is going to fight with Sesame Street? It's really hard to fight with Elmo, right? And if I get Elmo, then I got your kid. Remember Tickle Me Elmo? Do y'all remember Tickle Me Elmo? Oh, yeah, we oh. had Tickle Me Elmo. Oh, Tickle Me See. See how that goes? Next thing you know. Tickle me Elmo got you tickle Mo. <laughs> hey y'all, what's up Shaggle? May, you on the top Shaggle 1690. May hung up, I, cause y'all scared to touch this conversation. I already know. I know I'm gonna be in trouble again. They are gonna be calling me up talking about how crazy I am and how bogus I am. And I could read all that if I had a book. But because I don't have a book, there's not a lot of banter for me to do. Uh, although I am excited about the NBA, hey man, Todd, you know the NBA is coming this week, right? Oh, that's the kind of <laughs> this is the all this is the All Star Weekend, man, and you know the NBA crossover is coming. It's going to be all the time. It's a great opportunity for people to bring their family, their friends, to get a piece of the NBA experience. NBA. I think that'd be excellent because I think there's because uh, I've been to some events like that. And they are a lot of fun, and they are very different. Well, you know, they're, they're very different because they are also um, bringing in, they are, all, can you hear me? We're gone. Hello? Okay, I can't hear a thing. So anyway, Todd, what I am saying is the NBA is going to be off the chain. Um, the NBA Finals is going to be great. I'm looking forward to... Uh, not the NBA Finals, the All-Star Game, and I'm thinking it's going to be crazy. Like, over by my house, everything now is the All-Star Game. The posters, the signs, all the billboards, everything. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I know it's great because uh, I just went to the Big Ten Championship a couple of years ago, and they had a, a section where you do things and you throw balls and you run and you shoot. Man, I'm pretty sure it's, it's probably greater with the NBA, which has a ton of money. <laughs> well, they're going to also bring in a bunch of celebrities. There's going to be art, culture, sports, the whole thing. I know art. Huh? <laughs> Not that art. Oh, I'm sorry. Young people. <laughs> uh, let's go to Arnold. Arnold, you on the top of the Harold, I, you know what? I can't even go to Harold because I can't hear him. Oh, yeah. I can't, uh, I can't hear him. Uh -huh. So, look, Todd, um, I want to understand... You know what? Let's go to break and come right back. It's Talk Chicago 1690. Yes, we lost our starship. See, man, I hate when they don't just be paying attention, man. Come on. That thing is here. God. More than 30 years, it's a celebration for all of Chicago to enjoy. Did you know that in addition to all the on-the-court festivities, there are other fun things to do and see off the court, like the NBA I have nothing. No book, no nothing. I think they just be. Mm -hmm. I hate the weekends, just for the record. Oh, the weekends destroy this place. <laughs> I No, I, man, I freaking. I hate the weekends. It's like I come in here and the shit is just like you got to start over. You got like I'll be like literally, why you don't just clean up behind yourself? Yeah, that's crazy. And they steal your coffee cup. Ty. Yeah. They tear. Coffee drinker. Here's a. Uh, if you did the luck, Valentine's Day a couple of times today, and then the NBA.
Todd and Sonya, y'all got the cameras. You can talk, you talk to me that thing. Oh, man, my life has changed. Like, I've got a different camera. In history. I am now important. Somebody's phone is on the TV. I wonder who that is, because it's not me. Oh, let's see. What else is there going on? Oh, man. I'm watching the Fed Cup. That's the, the, the tennis where the United States plays, you know, against the world. And Serena lost the match. It was awful. She got some kind of incredible record. I can't remember if they won. I didn't see the last match. The rubber match. Mm. I missed the Alpha meeting this Saturday. I think I will go to James Ramos' meeting. If, if there's nothing going on, which I doubt. Nothing at night, at least. I gotta start doing a little more work for, for 21. You know, you gotta, gotta make your money when you can. Because eventually you're gonna retire. Kids are expensive. Made them clean up their rooms. Tornadoes had gone through their rooms. Hans is hoarding all the dishes. Plates. Bowls. Forks. I was wondering where all the forks went. Now I gotta make him wash all of them. Claire had so much dirty clothes, she had to go to the laundry mat. Kids. Can't live with them, can't live without them. It's funny when you're young, I didn't see Car Wash. I don't even remember the promo for Car Wash. But it came on Channel 5. And boy, did I love it. Of course, my favorite character was Richard Pryor. It's always that way. Man, Regina King looked so good yesterday at one. She was on the, the Oscars. Oscars. Oh, she was just phenomenal. I mean, her workout, like her, I, Carrie was like, damn, I ain't never heard nobody say they clavicle. I mean, I was like her neck, her shoulders, her arms, but her clavicle. Her clavicles, her clavicles is right here. But uh, it was like the way it was, like, I don't know how you, you could work out and it still, whatever it was, she just looked phenomenal. I love her. And I used to not like her. I like, when she was on 227, I didn't like her. But every movie she's been Don't in. Did you watch 227? Yeah, because it was the part of our Saturday night. Got like, it. it was, you know. Yeah, I get it. 227. We watched, like, the like you know, it was like 5, 7. You know, like, the because it used to be, I want to say it was, like, Different Strokes, then Miss Garrett and uh, 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 Facts of Life. Then I feel like it was 227 and something else on. Mm. Maybe it was that show with um, Christy McNichol and uh, the dude from Soap. It was the really father. Christy? No, Christy McNichol. Yeah. Remember her from Eight is Enough? Yeah, yeah, but you said Soap. I, I was The father from, the dude from Soap was oh. the father. Oh. And they had one more. Christy McNichols, like the drug addict sister who... This was a TV show? Yeah, it was good, though. I can't remember what it was called. I didn't see that. Oh, yeah, A-Man was on. A-Man was on. You're right, you're right, you're right. A-Man came on Amen. after... Uh... That was funny. Um, 
Did you like? I think. Um, no. Y'all ready? Take a moment, share the broadcast. Take a moment, share the broadcast. Y'all still don't believe me when I. First time that I saw your brown eyes, I slipped said hello and I said hi. I knew right then you were the one. But I was caught up in physical attraction, much to my satisfaction. Baby, you were more than just a face. And Ever in love again, yeah. I will be sure that the lady is a friend. If I yeah, ever fall in love so true, I will be sure that the lady's just like you. Oh. Yeah, baby, yeah. Oh, my, 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 my. I swear the next time she'll be my friend. If I say that I'd be your one and only, promise, promise, promise that you'll never leave me lonely. I just wanna be the one you need. Oh, baby. I just want to be the one to serve you. Sometimes I feel as if I don't deserve you. Cherish every moment that we share. And if I ever fall in love again, I will be sure that the lady is a friend. If I So true, man. I will be sure that the lady's just like Carrie. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Nate Jackson. Got my clothes to our stroke. It's hard to get off that one. That's going on my list, too. That's hard to get off that song, man. It's like it's hot. And the remix, the remix is like off the stupid shit. <laughs> you know what? And it was like. Is that true? Shy. No, Shay. that's shy. Shay. Shay. shy Look at that, brother. Shay. Look at you. Don't even know your own frat brothers, man. Look at that. Hey, I it, can't know all of them. I, man, <laughs> you know that was. You know, like when you was in college, and it was like all the um, like if your frat was in like a video or something like that, then the whole fraternity would be trying to be like, yeah, we shy. So it was like this song for Cotton Club. This song for like a year. Every time it was something the Alpha sang this. No, like really. every single time. It's the WVOA Morning Show. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Got my co host, Todd Stroger, but y'all know how we did the top of the hour. Gotta say what's up to Miss Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, as well as uh, Miss Sonia Escobar, the music conductor of the Soul Plane. Um, somebody called and said um, Sesame Street has characters whose mom's an addict and whose dad is in jail. That's, that's, that, that, that's different. Yeah, they've got pretty whirly. That's different. That's different. 
It's just different. It's different. It's different. It's different. Um, and I'm going to go to Harold, who was on the line before we were summarily dismissed. Harold, you're talk Chicago, 1690. Good morning, ladies, son. Good. Oh, look, you. Thank you, Harold. I'm going to take that. I appreciate the upgrade. What's up, my brother? I'm going right, I'm going right to your room. 60, where you at? 514 East 62nd Street. Thank you, I'll take that. Native son. I'll take it. Thank you, sir. Now, in that very turf, imagine had you not moved to Bolingbrook, the sun downtown, and come back with the spirit of 64th Street with the perspective of Bolingbrook. That's the uniqueness of who you are. Mm, and what you keep bringing up is the stuff of your ancestors who made that migration to the, to this northern city in the promised land. And what they ain't talking about now is, and what you guys need to address, is the, the reintroduction of the sub-gang culture with, as a control agent for the displacement of African Americans specifically within the Black Metropolis National Heritage Area, geographic boundaries. And I'll give you two examples. I think uh, Chicago Magazine just did a, a major piece on Jeff Ford. And there's a CTA sign at 71st and cops across from the police station that gives out the music of the grandson of the great the grandson of the other major gang titan in Chicago from the 60s. So it's the same game in terms of keeping us out of the unions, out of any aspect that can create commerce on our commercial business trips, right? Name me what sustainable project that we've de developed in the last 10 years. Uh, I, I, I hold out hope for the brother with the Regal Theater, right? But I'm not seeing across the landscape multiple sites and attractions that we own and operate that can build sustainable wealth for the next generation. And I ain't got to go no further than that. Th thank you, Harold. We appreciate you. Um, you know, Todd, I think that, that I'm going I'm to use Harold as a segue into my next topic. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Harold, for calling, and I appreciate that. But, man. That was good, Matthew. You know, sometimes you just be ready. <laughs> see, see, I Harold. See, when Harold was he, like, I steeled myself, right? Like I was prepared. See, I'm prepared for verbal assaults. I'm usually not prepared for physical. For assaults. physical assaults, right? right? So I was prepared for Harold to call me out and then he gave me an eighty-seven. I'm gonna take that. But I, at the same time, you know, because at eight thirty, you know, I got assaulted at the um, auto show. So we don't talk about <laughs> it. You keep laughing, man. It's not funny because it's like that's you, not as good as Mary Flowers because I know Mary. You know, Mary, well, I think this isn't even funny, though, because it's like, you know, they stole oh, this school. Is harassment. Like, I mean, they, they stole school, man. Like, I mean, like, you're mad at me because I said we need to save MTA? Think about what the genesis of your anger is from and why. But I just can't believe an elected official would allow that to happen anyway. And I'll, but, 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 but I'm going to segue because I'm here. Todd, I was listening to, you know, Mama Dorothy Tillman. On uh, Saturday morning, actually, I was listening, post listening, because I was asleep, because I was recovering from the, beat down. the I, first of all, I didn't get beat down. See, that's the problem. And it's like, that's that ego stuff that makes you get all hyped up. A brother be like, ain't nobody going in there. That's right. She beat you down, man. See, and then that's what you're going to do, man. That's exactly what they want to happen. You got pumped. That's exactly what they want to happen. And if they were not playing to my old maze, if they if the old maze would have, I would have took that bait, but I'm not. But Todd, I was listening to Mama Tillman, and she talked about what was going on at the, at the uh, post office. Now let me just start by saying that I am not the biggest fan of the post office. I try to stay out of the post office because I just I they they just ain't always the nice people. I spend a lot of time at the post office, and uh, I've uh, had some very friendly encounters with the main post office. Downtown. Oh, the main post office is good. But I'm going to tell you, if you go to, I used to live by the Cesar Chavez post office. Which, which, where is that? That's off of Ashland in like 8, 17, 18. Okay. And I used to hate that post office. You know why I hated that post office? No. 
because everybody was sending something back to Mexico. <laughs> and when you would go in there, <laughs> it would be like, the <laughs> and I'd be like, God, I just want to get a stamp. <laughs> I just need a stamp with this package. And then you would go through it, and it would be like this long, long, long thing. And everybody, and I'm not tripping, but you could tell the sister that was in there was getting a little frustrated. Right? They would be like, There was a language barrier? There was a language barrier. But then the Latinos would be snapping. That's why I heard somebody say they need to hire more bilingual people. Well, no, now they're saying that they want, so this is my thing. They're saying that they want bilingual postal workers in the post office. Now, post. Now, I'm just saying. And there was a story. There's there's a story about. Well, first of all, I think it's an overall plan. So, first of all, just think about this. Think about when Chewy Garcia goes to the president and says, "I want bilingual post office workers because we have undocumented immigrants who can't speak English enough to send money from the United States back home." I'm just telling you. <laughs> you said you made that face? You know, in the old days. Because <laughs> I used to work in the Daily Center. I was like a paralegal. And if someone came in. You only did have anything besides a government child, man. I worked at Toys R Us. I worked for Manpower. I worked for the New Orleans. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm just doing that so that the people can say, you only live off your daddy. <laughs> hey. I live off your daddy. That was a good living. That living. <laughs> That's some good living. Good That's eating, right. too. God bless him. Um, but uh, every once in a while, it, it would be a woman would come and she didn't speak English and she'd always have like a ten year old, and they would translate. That was that would be so many. But that's that. But 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 I don't. Can I ask you a question? Let me ask you a question. How do you think it works out for black people when Latinos say that they want bilingual? Postal workers. Now, I just need for y'all to be clear. It used to be a time when one out of four black people that was doing good, that was that had a house, that could go on a vacation, that was sitting in their front lawn, that was cutting their grass, worked at the post office. Right. The post office, like if you want a teacher and you need to climb, post office. The post office is one of the last bastions of where black people could succeed. And now the Latinos are saying they want bilingual post office workers. Remember one of the best and culturally important films of last uh, decade? What? Not decade, what? last century? Hollywood Shuffle. What does his grandmother always tell him? Look, it's always work at the post office. Ah, uh, see? It's Tough Shadow 1690. We'll be back. More of The Morning Show with Mays Jackson coming up on The Talk of Chicago, 1690 W. So think about when they say, when, when Chewy Garcia, first of all, think about them black people are about to get kicked out of that post office. That's what's going to happen. They're going to get ran up out the post office because the Latinos are going to say, we don't want nobody who can't speak our language. Can we do that? What? Can we do that? So think about it. By, by, but that's the whole point. They use bilingual. And who's to say that bilingual has to be freaking Spanish? Bilingual means two languages. Why does that language have to be Spanish? Why is the assumption that that language has to be Spanish? Because they get in control. Polish. Right. But what it is is a play to own the shit in their neighborhood without saying Latinos. They could just say you don't speak English. My thing is you should be able to say, well, my, if you can't speak English at a U.S. post office, you got a fucking problem. <laughs> You on
Everybody, mama, auntie, somebody retired from the post office. They trying to run you out that month. And think about how, as they talk about the census and the population shifts and they get that, then they're going to be coming for all our post office workers. How often have you seen a black male man, male woman, male carrier? How often have you seen a Latino one? There is no video, it was just a picture. But y'all don't get it. Y'all gonna just be like bilingual, just like they said they want bilingual teachers. But if they want bilingual teachers, that means a black teacher has to take Spanish and major in it to be able to teach at CPS. That's in the fucking contract. Y'all be, y'all be so sleep, man. Meanwhile, I gotta worry about freaking a, a automatic staffer throwing elbows. Like, how do I? You are tuned into the Talk Chicago 1698. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Tua Hodge, Georgia Todd. Mama Tillman just text me, correct me. She said, listen here, you got that wrong. I was talking about the State of the Union. We was talking about the fact that the State of the Union, we was talking on Saturday morning, I forgot, uh, about how the fact that Trump has got black folks so, so twisted around, the Democrats got black folks so twisted around that they got black folks rooting against Tuskegee Airmen and black astronauts. Like remember the like no, the black that's folks. Not, that's they, not, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna say like this time. You, you know what? This what? is I, I think it's a great thing that he uh, he awarded him a brigadier general. He was an he, alpha too. Did you know that? No, even though he's retired. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this is what I say. This is what you do when you try to get a group who isn't oh. politically savvy. You give them a lot of bells and whistles that are nice. And help and, and and recognize some person, but you don't give them anything of true substance. That sounds like our whole black political system in Illinois right now. <laughs> Seriously, I'm with you. I mean, I don't think we get enough. <laughs> of substance. I'm saying, like, it seems like I mean, it's like this: damned if you do, damned if you don't. But Mom Tillman hit me up and said, "What she was? Did did y'all know that Chewy is introducing a bill to ban? Dig this. Check this out, y'all. Check this out." the importation to prison pipeline immigration to prison pipeline what's that mean basically he wants to stop people who have entered the country illegally and committed crime from having to go to jail like or that it's not a criminal act now to come here Todd my thing is this Latinos are eating our lunch think about the fact that they are now saying that to work at the post office they want you to be bilingual Think about the gravity of that. Think about how many black people made it to middle classdom. You know how many people I went to to um, college with? Black kids who I went to college with, whose parents went to, to work at the post office? Not a lot, huh? Now think about the gra Could you imagine? Because right now they're saying the post office, the aldermen, and I gotta wonder what is going on for the black people in the twenty fifth ward. Like those black people that live over in um, Barbara Jean Wright courts. All of those black people that live all in that area, who is speaking for them? So do they have? Is somebody gonna make sure that when they go to the post office that the that they can speak, they can understand them? Will the will the Latinos be responsible? Think about that lady posted and told on the black folks for being at the post office because they were rude. Because she said they was rude. Now all they need to do is come to a, um, 
black post office and recognize that a lot of times they not discriminating. They treat everybody the same. Right? <laughs> I'm just saying. Right, they will. Patrick, you're on top of Chicago, 1690. Hey, good morning, fellas. Good, good morning. morning. You know, I, I'm never, I'm never going to vote for a Republican because it ain't never made a difference to me who the president is. I'm getting mine anyway. Um, but if Democrats get in that office, they're going to give everything away to the gays and the Hispanics. And I'm telling you, it's going to get harder and harder for black people. What those black post office workers need to do, and, and I don't mean no disrespect to legal um, immigration people who do it the right way, but they need to just call ICE and have ICE out there and um, send those people back. Because there's nowhere in the world that my grandfather fought two wars for this country, a black man, then fought segregation and, and Jim Crow, and these people come over here and take our jobs like that, man. It, they should be speaking English. Man, I, you know what, Patrick? I, I think it's crazy that, like, literally a federal building where people are, we, we they telling the people we got to com accommodate them. Who accommodates black people? And madam, look, let me tell y'all what, because she here to get me right. She here to get it right. And and I and, and mama tell me you only really got a minute, cause Ty got a, you got two minutes. Cause Ty gotta do his thing, so I'm gonna shut up and let you talk. It's Dorothy Tillman. Dress uh bells and whistles. Trump did not give and look, I'm an independent Democrat, now we build a plantation. <laughs> Go Hello. Ahead. Go ahead. You here? I'm sorry. Okay. Now we'll be on the plantation. I'm an independent to come uh, Democrat, so I'm not on the plantation. But let me just say, Trump didn't give folks bells and whistles. He gave the HBCUs permanent funding. Uh, uh, the opportunity zones. Now that you see the lure and all these big banks fix their and they go through our community and they're going to make the money. He gave us the opportunity zone. The first step program that we get our people. Those, those are not bells and whistles. The fact that that little boy who said he wanted to go and be an astronaut, now he's in this camp. Those were not bells and whistles. Those were things that made sense. But I was saying that if you can't stand up what's good for black people or what's good for something is wrong with you, you operate under the Pablo dog theory that just because it's Trump, you don't pay attention when we just do what other folks say we, we should do for them. You don't come out there, but we do vote with people in office. They don't do what they're supposed to do. So that, that was not bells and whistles. Those were things of substance. And that's just something the thing I was telling you about was the new way forward uh, act that he, he introduced Chewy. Do me a favor. Hey, 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 uh, my, um, Alderman Tillman, can you hold on? Because I'm going to bring you back after this break. Ty okay. has to do uh, the Black History Month. Go ahead. This Black History Month, the WVON Morning Show is proud to present Black, Black Facts. Facts. With today's Black Fact, here's WVON Morning Show host Todd Stroger. Maze, our Black History Fact today is about Bill Pickett. Pickett? Bill Pickett? <laughs> what did Bill do? Well, I'll tell you. A renowned radio, uh, radio, rodeo performer. Yeehaw! Yes, was inducted into the National Cowboy Hall of Fame in 1971. He was the first African American to receive the honor. He has also been recognized by the U.S. Postal Service as one of the 20 legends of the West in a series of stamps. And that is our history fact for today. Okay, well, let me do this. I got a little bit of time, so I'm going to go back to line. One line one, call you on Talk Chicago 1690. I love you, May. I love you back. Hey, look, first of all, do I have to do a soup on my own? No, they brought this issue up before. You don't need to have to be battling, you haven't been battling over the last hundred years. Mm. Also, if you want to have somebody there that speaks Spanish and they do have it, then fine. You should get no extra privilege. Do not change that to a battling, that's a federal building and that's a federal job. <laughs> I heard that. I'm just saying. Like, should English be a requirement? Like, can we make specialized? Here's my thing. Let's have a designated bilingual line if you want to have that. And you got to all get in that line. There should be, I mean, like, you trying to tell me I got to wait an extra hour because somebody don't know how to speak English in the United States? Yeah, use your Google Translate or something. But I'm just, I'm asking, Todd. Like, this is crazy to me. 
it's it's almost now to the point where it's worse to be like I feel like I'm in bizarre world where everything that I learned growing up now doesn't count. Like I remember, remember when English was a class. You used to try and get good grades. It's still a, it's a class. Yeah, right, right. Well, for what? It's a requirement. For what? It's top Chicago 1690. We're gonna talk to Dorothy Tell when we come back. Live from the WBON News. I'm gonna let Dorothy. All right. I, I I won't deny that he has done some things, but I've always been under the the. Uh, I always work under, if you are giving me cake and stab me in the chest. You don't operate under that, though. That well. But, Todd, you don't operate that way because Madigan, I mean, look at Illinois. It's like, it's, it's at the present, that sounds good, but it's like we literally can document our fuckings here. Like, we can document how we get screwed by the exact same party. If you think about it, we live in bizarre world. All the stuff that people are fighting for on the Republican side, outside of like fair maps, all of that stuff. We are our own worst enemy. I can't blame Madigan for taking advantage of Negroes who will run away from the group. If we don't have- Man, when in, I'm saying like this. I can't think of a time with a politician, with a black politician recently, in my recent time, where when the white boy said what he wanted, he didn't get what he wanted. Like, I mean, and even if he gave you what you wanted, he fucked you four years later. He Y'all asked for Todd, he gave you Todd, and then he screwed you. Now, the screwing didn't work the way they wanted it to work, but it, it, it worked. It's like all of the people who it is so hard for me to have these conversations when it's like if we say all politics is local and we look at where black people are and we are the epitome of a democratic state it's like we got we and we protect the fuckers we do we protect Mays. yes we have been screwing each other for the last 50 years at least we see no reason to, to work together. Now, I, I, like, I'll tell you, back when the, the uh, there was a, a true independent Democrats like uh, Dorothy Tillman. Wait, you were a true independent Democrat when? I didn't say that. Oh. I said when there were true independent Democrats like Dorothy Tillman and Bobby Rush and Danny Davis. Uh, well, even before them, there was always a, an element that was always fighting the power, which is great. But that element worked with the power, the black people who were elected. I mean, they talked to them. I agree then, with that. Then everybody got, you know, revolutionized, and they didn't want to work with them to have goals. They just wanted to defeat them, which was impossible because they had no true organization themselves. And still don't. They yeah, just, they rabble rouse. Like, go ahead, finish. Well, and this is, nothing's truly changed. So now we got uh, the, the ADOS group, and then we got uh, people who are activists, and we got regular, just old guys who are elected, women too, and they still can't get together. I think, and it's like, it's funny to me. Well, you know, like. I told you what my dad used to tell me. What? Do you think all those Irish guys like each other? No, I agree. I mean, that's the whole reason I didn't call the police on this broad, right? Mm -hmm. It's like the whole reason that, like, can I be honest with you? Like, honestly, as much as I have helped people in all different, like, levels, honestly, people offer to do a lot, right? Like, a lot. And it's literally like, I'm like, don't do that. We, I'm, If I allow you to do that, then we become what I'm trying to stop. That is my whole point about Trump. Yes, uh, I think that, that uh, the school thing is the greatest thing in the world. But when you are giving me something, while on the other hand, you're giving my literal enemies something to hold on to, you're not helping me. What you're really doing is putting me in danger. Well, I feel like... Um, 
I, I damn you man, I lost my whole point. I forgot where I was even at. Um, but I, I, I. Wh- and besides that, my thing with Trump is it's a twofold thing. I think he he's a bell whistle for for white nationalists. One and two. Wasn't Reagan the same? Do you think I like Reagan? No, I'm not saying. I'm <laughs> saying we survived. And I mean, I think that, quite frankly... We survived, but is survival, is that what you're just trying to do? Just well, I mean, I'm saying I don't think it's survival. I think that if we weren't fucking busy sitting everything out, like when you go to other places and people are doing well, and you look around and you be like, damn, we sitting here saying resist, 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 and we still got the highest black unemployment in the country. You could talk that shit about a $15 an hour job, but motherfuckers here don't even got $15 an hour jobs. And the people who have education, like... I, my job is not like if you only stopped at high school, you got a, a ceiling. You got a ceiling. Now, unless you can find something in another space, when you quit at high school, you got a ceiling. So you should know that you ain't getting a mansion if you if you stopped at high school. They should teach you that. If you stop here without starting a business or doing something else, not going to college, but if you don't go beyond this. If they literally talked about the number of black students who dropped out by uh, the time they're 17, I mean, if they really talked about it, then we'd be like, no wonder this world's so screwed up. There, it's a, I don't know, I can't tell you the exact number, but I just know it's huge. Uh, at 17, you can stop going to school, and nobody can stop you. So, we got a ton of people who are out there who don't know nothing. They're, they're just not educated. They can't, they can't do anything. I think it's that's on black and white. And I think you'd find that because we knew the white kids who walked out of high school and never came oh, yeah, back to. I, but I don't. Well, I shouldn't say I it, care about them. But right, I, I agree. I'm not around them. I got you. All I'm saying is, Todd is like I think it's crazy for black folks to be like that. That worked for us, but we should shut up. We shouldn't say nothing. That worked. You asked for a criminal justice reform. Everybody else is fighting and telling you why things can't happen. Dude, just be like, okay, it can happen. I'm saying start making demands. Racism ain't going away even when you elect this next white president. Do you think racism? If they elected Pete Buttigieg right now and they you talk to all the black people in South Bend, they say he was a racist and he was a Democrat and all of that stuff, etc. We back. Hold on. We Hold back. On. Hold on. What does it feel? How does it feel? This is this is how D'Angelo did that video. He was look. That's how he did it. <laughs> oh, <I'm tired. sighs> mm Mm-mm-mm. All the politicians pander to ill informed black people. Who is not pandering? For you. You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. I got my co host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Todd, uh, I'm going to take Katie's call. I'm going to let uh, Alderman Tillman say her piece, and then I'm going to let you respond. And then we're going to move on to Harvey being the strip club capital of the Midwest. Uh, some people say it helps the town, uh, according to the promoters. Well, I guess it is a tax base. <laughs> well, no, no. That, but that, not cash. Ain't nobody taxing them singles. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, let's First of all, let's start with Katie. Katie, you're on the top of Chicago 16. Katie? Katie, don't you know we love you, sweet Katie? Katie, come on! Get out the car! Katie got a phone. She got a Bluetooth. Hey, hello? Yeah. See that, Katie? Come on. Hello? Kelly, Kelly. hello? Come on! I'm sorry, I was dropping my granddaughter off at school. Take care of that baby. Uh, <laughs> um, my thing about with this uh, post office is I think that uh, they need to learn English. Need to learn English. We shouldn't be uh, uh, black workers, white workers, should be forced to learn Spanish anymore. You know, that's, uh, that's getting old. I'm going to tell you, Katie, I think that 
you as a black work, if you tell me that black people gonna lose their jobs or not be able to get hired in the United States because they can't speak Spanish, I think that is completely outrageous. Outrageous. And if we roll with that, and, and guess what? I bet you black elected officials in, in Congress are gonna be like, that's a good idea. We've got to stand with our brothers and sisters. Meanwhile, they stand away behind you. All right, let me go back to Alderman Tillman. Alderman Tillman, please. You got me laughing, man. You're absolutely correct. <laughs> they will be doing that. I'm telling you, you know they're going to be doing it. You know they do that because they're cowards and they're scared to fight by themselves along with their people. You know, and you can't get angry at you or any of them because one thing you can say, they're in there fighting for their people. And, and, and I told you, I, I read the article I told you to read and said of this paper. We have more than one language bilingual. They're only talking about right. the Spanish, and we let them get away with it. That's a takeover. Understand, now, this is not just, this is a total takeover. And uh, we're supposed to, you come here and learn English. Now, if you look at NBC last week before last, they had a uh, special, you can click and find it, where the bilingual, the people reading, they're better off in science and math and, and, and proficient in English than our children. So you need to read that, too, because they got everything. But so I was telling you about the uh, New Way Forward Act. That's a very dangerous act, and it's saying that no longer will you be able to take I don't care what kind of criminals from jail to pipeline to uh, to deportation, and even those who we deported based off of that, they want to have uh, some lecture where you bring them back. And I got to, and I saw some congressmen standing behind them. I well, these are black ones. I didn't see any black ones. They better not. A bunch of them, a bunch of them signed on, and we got to see. So we're sleeping, and that wasn't, a, I, Todd is my little brother, my little son. I just, you know, not attacking he him. He little, too. <laughs> <laughs> the fact of the matter is, you can't hardly find, I hope you try, but I got it in my phone if you missed it. Uh, they have scrubbed Van Jones from CNN, and he told them, Trump is not playing. Y'all sitting there, because Van Jones worked on the First Step Act. Van Jones and Trump have given these people all of this stuff, that the black college, he did all the stuff Trump doing, and he's used to them making fun at it. This man actually did that maze. Uh, look, we didn't, we didn't call Bush bells and whistles when he gave us memorial for Dr. King, when he gave us the black museum, the African-American museum, when Reagan gave us King Holiday. We didn't say it was bells and whistles. Those are things, and they want us to keep thinking like that. So we need to just see, these things are really real. These are not things that somebody's telling us they're going to do. And I was saying that the, the black elected officials did not even stand up and clap for the little girl who got a scholarship to go to a school. When their children go to private schools, now their children go to these regular public schools, and they didn't clap for the little boy who's going to the science lab, other man who's gotten off of drugs, and this man now is in the opportunity zone, and he's doing work and got him a job. Now, these white folks, I want y'all to understand in the city of Chicago, all this stuff that Lori got laid out, that's what I, I, I laid out Saturday. Most of these programs with the money she's going to give and all that is part of the Opportunity Zone, the TIF money, the money that, uh, 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 the chain, uh, bring the money back to the community to run all this. She's putting all this stuff together. Lori Healy have left Mac Pierre, gone to a company to work on Opportunity Zone. The money that was given to us to work in our community, how amazing other folks get business, are not going to us because we're sitting back hating rather than making sure that's the point i was making thank you Alden. Uh, okay and you should go and listen or read that speech go back and look at uh chewy he was on tucker carson i got it in my phone if you can't find it I'm and also it. on bass jones what he said about the things that was done and how embarrassed he was that we sitting here talking about oh no 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 oh no trump have done the things and i love you too todd <laughs> yeah you too <laughs> thank you okay thank bye you bye. I, you but, know i just think that but i still don't trust them and uh, who, and, who you trust and, 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 and it's, it's not just about black folks for me it, it's more as he is trying to destroy the well first he's trying to destroy the government so you know as he's he is one of those guys as he's giving you one thing he's screwing you another way so he's destroying all these departments that are supposed to keep us safe as he put it all these people who know nothing about the department, the only thing they know about the department is how to, to chop it in two. So if you do some research on it, you'll find that most of the department heads are chopping things in two. And he's cutting back on Medicare, he wants to cut uh, Social Security. Man, this guy's not good for us all. And he wants the president to be a dictator. I'm I just not for that. Okay. I, all I'm saying is, it's funny to me, because it's like if we did this thing three years ago or four years ago, Black folks are convincing black folks not to take advantage of things that are there for us. Um, and the other part is, I told y'all before. I'm, there, take it. I'm telling you. What, I'm did, what did Harold Washington say? I know you love to hear about that. 
Take, take the, the money, money vote from me. Uh, it's the same thing. Who, which, who are we voting for, though? I don't know that yet. Right, exactly. <laughs> and all I'm telling you is everything that we're talking about right now, the Illinois Democrats do to us every freaking day. They, we let them get away with it. Okay. I'm saying who stopped it? Who sitting in the last in the last 20 years? Who's worked to stop it? Give me a name. Well, well, well give me a black name. What year is this? 20 yeah, years to be yeah. like 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is what I say. I would say that uh, no name though. John Stroger and Emil Jones were trying to work to get black people to work together. Uh, it worked for a little bit, but it didn't work for long uh, as they left. And then everyone's like afraid, so they just kind of scatter in the wind. Well, don't y'all got a black caucus? Don't y'all got a joint black caucus? Don't y'all got a... What y'all do all these black meetings? What's all these black ass meetings for? If we have, if ain't nobody going... What's all the black ass meetings for if nobody is going to stand up for black folks? Uh, Mona, you want to talk Chicago 1690. Thanks for taking my call. I just want to say that in this particular class, what we're doing is a little... Let me tell you, it won't be just... Okay, Mona, we, we got to come back. Now, Mona, 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 you got to get somewhere okay. stationary. Don't hang up, but get somewhere where you got four bars because you're cutting out. Brother Hall, you're on Tough Chicago, 1690. Yeah, thank you, brother. Listen, uh, let me just say this, man. Why we have to depend on Trump or anybody else if we play our whole card? See, our problem is that we allow the Democrats to, every four years, come around with us with this nonsense. The fact of the matter is that when you look at our urban areas all over, it's a disgrace. So I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, clapping and jumping up and down for no Democrats, but I'm certainly not going to drink any of that Trump shit. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Stop. I got you. Here's what I'm saying. See, this is what I keep telling y'all. Y'all keep acting like if any of these white folks love you. Like, y'all be trying to play like, ooh, this white guy is better than me. This white guy is better than that white guy. Let me tell you what. They all been screwing us. We have F evidence. And now they saying, and then what we allow them to do is trick us into being like, let's stand with the people at the border, right? And cry about the border. But we, we over here dying on our own line, on our own vine. Mona, you got the last call real quick. Mona? I just want to say that. They are creating literally a climate for Trump to win again. Yep. And not only for him to win again, they're going to flip black people to yep. Republicans. You're going to have Buttigieg, a gay president, Chris, black Christians, I'm telling you, no, I don't want to hear it. They, uh, Trump is the devil they do know versus, versus the one they don't. And that's my comment. Thanks, Mona. I'm going to tell you, when Trump stood up and told people they could pray in the schools, Y'all keep sleeping on this dude. He's going to win again, and we're going to be sitting out. For, so let me just tell you, if Trump wins again, according to my records, black people will have officially sat out government for three presidents, three two-term presidents. And you want, we sat out Bush, too. We sat out Obama, and now we about to sit out Trump. And Negroes are telling us to do it. And you wonder why your neighborhoods look the way they do. This is the Chicago 1690. We done set out four, pre three presidential, three dual term presidential elections. <laughs> Screw him. He ain't gonna do nothing. Uh, no, we're actually <coughs> we don't send him out. We are. Uh, we elect him and then don't get shit. Well, who are we talking about? Bush. Trump. I mean, I'm saying we were told not to do nothing with Bush, right? So you don't, Bush was the devil, we, we threw him. Then we sat out Barack because we said we the white people were after him. So we can't ask him for nothing, we can't demand nothing from him. Then we got Bush, I mean Trump. Four years, we done sat out the four years because we resist, resist, resist. Uh, now, no, and then think no, about well, No, 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 the truth is they, they were doing things that were counterproductive to us. It, it was, they, Bush let us know. Walk and chew gum. Who his people were. That's too much. Bush said to, and he wasn't kidding, to the rich people, you are my constituents. And he wasn't kidding. He was he was playing to them. Top. And he was thinking about Texas. You see how Texas did? They, did, they made out pretty well. Black people in Texas is doing good, too. Mm. Yeah. Everybody should be doing pretty well in Texas. Bush looked after that state. So, But we sat it out. 
What do what do we do in Barack? What do we get from Barack? You ain't get nothing. I'm not afraid to say it. Okay. So, <laughs> so the last president black people had the ability who had any expectation was Bill Clinton. Open them. Hmm. Mm-mm, I didn't open them. I'm not a big chocolatey, chocolatey. I'd be scared of the surprise unless it's some caramel in there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, you think about it. We have literally been out of the presidential game since Bush. Seriously. Since Bush. Probably. That's and so, that, and Nick is still telling you to just sit out as we have gone down a slippery slope. Like, don't participate in government. You resist. And white people still doing better. They like, we don't like him, but guess what? We gonna keep moving. We be like, oh, we don't like him. So we don't do it. I can't take it, man. Uh, it's like Man, this how, is how. How do you trust a guy? I don't trust nobody. <laughs> Stop it! Like that's the whole point. Like y'all trying to act like it's somebody to trust. You, I don't trust none of them. None of them. So I say, so how I do you get, trust a guy who literally? I don't trust calls, anybody. Calls people in his office who know nothing about a subject, but only because they're famous and wants to, them to be some kind of uh, of uh, expert. So he, so he can. Todd, have you like have that. you seen how appointments get made in Illinois? I mean, I'm saying like this. One, you get if you're the department head, you ain't the person running the shit. No way. That's a that's a, a political appointment. Everything underneath that. Now, that's his agenda. He got elected. Elections have consequences. No, now, I mean, in the meantime, I mean, like calling Steve Harvey in and all that stuff. Uh, man, so what? Like you, because you wouldn't take the call. The motherfuckers who could do something won't take the call. So you talk to somebody. It's like. If Steve Harvey wasn't such a fucking egomaniacal person, he would have brought somebody political with him. But no, everybody thinks they're going to be the savior. So he's like, I think I could do it, and then I could deliver Trump. No, asshole, you don't do politics. Bring a politician with you, or a political operative with you, have an agenda before you go in. We talking to celebrities, because guess what? You can't name a black politician that would take the call. That would go. When he asked to speak with Meek Mill, Jay Z told Meek Mill not to go instead of saying, let's work him instead of letting him work us. You know he's simple. He wants his ego. He wants his ego stroke. Stroke his ego as every lobbyist knows they gotta do. With you, with you, with you. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Got my co-host to a hard stroller, a I'm bringing the Spinner's Greatest Hits on the island when I get to shipwreck. But Spinner's Great, that's your one album? I, I only get one? You only get one. What if you had it's only two? No, no, one no, album. I got to get a double album. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, uh, Ty, we were talking about President Trump. Sonia, uh, Dorothy Tillman says that the Van Jones clip is in her folder. I want you to find that. We're going to save it for a little bit later, but I want to play it. Um, Because I do think that one of the things that, like, the the people with blinders on is, is that there have been accomplishments that Trump has made, and we as black folks have so been so busy saying no, 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 putting our blinders on. I think it is the politicals, that typical politicals that don't, that want to just, that are playing the party game. But I think average black folks, they're not going to vote for Trump. But I do think average black folks see when somebody got out of jail. If you've been locked up in jail, you know. And all this stuff that all these people talking about what you, you wouldn't do. You mean that tiny percentage of Americans? No, I thought that they... What how many, What percentage of black men have had some contact with the law enforcement? What does right? contact mean? Con- man, arrested, pulled over, uh, been in the car, been in the jail, some of that. A lot. At least one in four. At least one in four. That's 25%. Guess what? Get half of that, you're screwed. Just for that. percent Yep. One in four black males has had interaction with the criminal justice systems. And I think it's more than that. 
All right, let's go to um, Todd. I want to move though, because I want to go to, and I'm gonna have to come back to this. We're gonna move to Harvey. No, Harvey. Uh oh. Harvey. But did you hear that there's a new (laughs) mayor? I have good friends in Harvey. Uh, there are. I, you know, I like Harvey sort of. Um, you know, one of the best things, one of the funnest interviews I had was when Mayor Kellogg came on the show. Uh-huh. Mayor Kellogg came out here, man. They was like, they, they was like the black mob, dog. It was like they showed up. It was like, dum, ch, ch, ch. I heard theme music and everything, Did man. Did they show up in that in their gold, um, I think it was a Suburban. No, no, no. It wasn't a gold Suburban. I don't know. What, they, I didn't see. They picked it up from a drug dealer. Really? Yeah, yeah, you know how, you know, if you, if you get something from a drug dealer, you can make it part of your department. Uh-huh. It became part of the police Oh, department. I need to get something. I need to get one of those. <laughs> anyway, um... But since uh, Mayor Kellogg is no longer in Harvey and they have elected a new mayor, the new mayor decided that he was going to close all bars and nightclubs at midnight. I thought Uh, it was two. No, he decided midnight. Oh, wow. And midnight essentially shut down all of the nightclub industry in Harvey. Now, you know, I always think about Harvey as being the um, stripper capital of Midwest, of the Midwest. (laughs) No, seriously. Like adult Wait, entertainment. Isn't Brooklyn the stripper capital of the Midwest? Brooklyn where? Brooklyn. Oh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn to <laughs> Illinois? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the capital. That's Springfield. That's the Springfield South capital. Okay. Right? You yeah, you know what? That's funny you said that because you know what? I bet I bet if it's a lot of people that be in Brooklyn that right now be thinking about, boy, I bet they ain't passing no red light cameras on the way to Brooklyn. <laughs> Stop. That ain't around here. I, you know what? I bet if you at, you know what, see, I'm going to start being like, maybe we should ban Brooklyn, Illinois, um, and, and legislators going to that. I bet you, well, I bet that place could tell some stories. I went to Brooklyn, Illinois one time, Ty, and the things I saw in Brooklyn, Illinois, I was like, is this real? <laughs> this couldn't possibly be happening. It was amateur night. And I was like. That's got to be awful. Uh no. Nothing worse than an amateur anyway. Well, first of all, you know, I don't do um, strippers and all that stuff. I'm the guy that goes to the strip club and is like, no! Don't you take... And what a sister got to do for a dollar these days? <laughs> I mean, you go to a white strip club, they be like, don't you touch her. You look at her crazy. They running you up out of there. At a black strip club, they be like, a dollar? Oh, no. Phil, brother feel like he should be able to touch your tonsils for a dollar. Duh. Right. Oh, now, my goodness. But they're basically saying that they are ending, they are based, the mayor is saying that he wants to um, really close down these and clean up Harvey. The, the owners of the clubs are saying that it's going to destroy their business. I want to know what do the people of Harvey think? Like, does Harvey enjoy being like the, the strip club capital of the Midwest? Like, nobody's on call because, right. You know, but I, I just think about it, man. Todd, would you want a um, strip club in your neighborhood? No, no thanks. Why? What's wrong with that? I mean, it is a form of adult entertainment. And where do... You can get to that uh, that one, I don't know, if it's a strip club, I don't know what they call that. It's a, they call it a gentleman's club? Mm-hmm. Right off of uh, 94? Right off of like... Uh, the Admiral? Yeah. No, that's not it. The Up Wild north? Uh, south? The factory? Oh, the factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's probably 10 minutes from my house. Hey, man, I'm going to tell you... Uh, my man, um, but it's on Doty Road, so it's kind of like off the beaten path. Yeah, they had a little. Tr- I actually uh, represented them for a minute. Well, I actually helped them get represented for a minute. I guess, Todd, my question is: Do because the the promoters are saying that you know strip clubs and stop violence said that they st- and they said everybody in there busy looking at the naked women. They ain't busy shooting each other in Harvey. Mm. Let me ask a question. So, to the residents of the South, it, but you know what's unfortunate. What's on for? And they also say that they they provide the tax base. The mayor says, "Shoot, if y'all paid all the taxes that y'all supposed to be paying, we wouldn't have to have worry about lights, oh, curbs, and gutters, <laughs> right?" And so I think that one of the things we got to talk about, and I, I don't have a lot of time for it now, but we'll talk about it on another day. I'm gonna try and get some people in. Ty, why don't you make that a conversation? Let's see if we can get Asa in, and let's see if we can get the mayor of Harvey in, and let's talk about strip clubs in the Southland because it does seem like. They push all that stuff to our neighborhoods. Although, in the western suburbs, they got it in this cracker. It's like the bada bing, bada boom. Hey, y'all, it's Talk Chicago 1690. When we come back, it's Miss Amisha Cross with the Washington, D.C. update. We'll be back after traffic, news, and the weather. Chicago and the voice of the nation. 1690 WBON, Berwyn, Chicago.
Y'all stay tuned because it's coming. Does anybody want um window signs? Don't forget the what's in the for the black people mean tomorrow. Do 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 do. Did y'all know that the Tribune plagiarized me? I just want y'all to see this. Let's do it before and after. Hey, y'all, starting on Thursday. It's the Illinois Minotti Podcast. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. I'm going to break it down. I'm looking for a co-host, though. I need a co-host for the podcast. Someone who understands Illinois politics. Who ain't scared. Maybe like a, um, and now we got video screens coming, too. Our studio is going to be off the chain. I got to get a... Uh... Did y'all see that? Y'all saw it, right? You see, I did this in October. Mine was October of 2019. Theirs came out February of 2020. Nothing that they had showed the people that I had... And they still ain't got all the people because they still don't understand it all. You know, I wonder, do they? Do you think they plagiarized it on purpose or do you think they thought they had a good idea and just did it? Like, didn't realize that they had seen it before. Y'all don't forget to get your... Dang, what should I do about it? I'm about to... Should I accept flattery as the um, sincerest form of flattery? But y'all do realize that I've been telling y'all these pieces and parts way longer than everybody. It's like it's crazy to me because people don't want to listen. Or they try to play like I don't know what I'm talking about. Or they try to play like I'm crazy. When I'm not really crazy. I know what I'm talking about. I actually lived it. I know all of the people and the players. One of these days, oh, probably at the, um, probably on Thursday when I do the podcast, I'm going to show you pictures of me with some of the people that got caught up. Can I tell y'all what? I have been blessed in my life. Um, I feel like, you know how uh, Bugs Bunny, when Wiley Coyote pushes him off the cliff in the phone booth, and he always seems to step out right before it crashes? That seems to have been my story. I think that God put me in this space. I know this sounds crazy. To be able to interpret this stuff as it goes along. Um, I wanted to do a television special on it. But since I can't get a TV show to do it. I'm going to do my own podcast. Now I'm going to ask you all to tune in and invite people. And share people Thursday. That's why I'm giving you time now in advance. I'm not just popping up. It's Thursday. Also. Um, I want you all to understand. I want you all to understand that. Um. I am going to continue to work. I'm not, I'm a lobbyist still, right? I'm still a lobbyist. So I got to eat. Got to present the best. 
They're not gonna put me on Chicago tonight. I'm I am the anti black the I am the antithesis of the type of black person that they would want on Chicago tonight or any liberal white TV show. If you are trying to get a black person that's gonna speak the script that you need them to say, then I ain't the one. And I don't it's like I love Chicago tonight. I'm not going front, but I, I have come to the recognition that because it is a bastion of liberal white politics and I do not espouse them and I do not make them feel comfortable, I will not be there. I so what they do is they take a you know. You know. I'm not gonna say what I was gonna say. There's the A team, the B team. And the C two. I mean, I think that putting me on Chicago tonight puts Democrats in a very uncomfortable position. It's like because I tell like raw, raw, raw truth, not like the hey, I'm just gonna I'm gonna be like just like when they shut me down on Flannery because dude was like he is right, but let's get past that, hmm? right? Wash, rinse, repeat. Now y'all, in a minute, I'm about to start making my podcast subscriber-based only. You gotta pay the five dollars a month to get it. I was thinking about taking the morning show offline, period, and just letting it be a listen to thing. And then, if you want to get the video content, then you you would then subscribe and become a paid subscriber. That way, when I talk about the things that I talk about, I have some protection. Hit that dope Totsky. Social media. Rise and shine. Never really mattered too much to me. No, just too damn old for me. All that really mattered was you were my girlfriend. And baby, that's all that mattered to me. Let me love you. Tonight, let me love you down. Remember when he drove me home from work? It gets me right. All my friends think I'm just too young for you. Baby, things their age can do. Let me love you down. Trump can do wrong, they can all do wrong, but I they all wrong. And that's to you, Benita. You are tuned in to Top Chicago 1698. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Toraj Trojan. But, Todd, you know how we do at the top of the hour. Got to say what's up to the WVON Morning Show team. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, as well as Miss Love You Down, Sonia Escobar, who is over there. Bring it down. You have, If you want to see it, you got to go to Facebook Live. Let's see you go to Facebook Live. You know, I was wondering, you think that uh, the clubs in Harvey would let me come go Facebook Live from there for some research? Let people see what really goes on? I think no. we need a study. Oh, maybe we do need a study. 
and some behind the scenes and some interviews. Maybe we should do the morning show from one of the clubs. Oh, can we do the morning show from one of the clubs? Well, I wouldn't do that one on Facebook. I bet our subscribers on Facebook Live be off the chat. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, y'all. Take a moment. Share the broadcast. Hey, you know what? There was a time when I ran up every flight of stairs I saw. Was it like six? Huh? No, probably, probably all the way till about mm, ten years ago. Oh, okay, I just thought that. Was right. that when you threw that in? Is that when? Uh, is that right about the time that black? I mean, Democrats in Illinois stopped doing stuff for black people. Or was that fifty years ago? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If you don't do for yourself, shame on you, sir. Yeah, I shame know. I mean, that's that. That tie is exactly the reason. I don't know if you ever saw that list of black elected officials that I posted for Black History Month. The post. The the the. the uh, yes. The meme that I shared is I said as we begin Black History Month, I'd like to remind Illinois black elected officials we've done our jobs. Now please return the flavor, favor, because we have the most black elected officials and the most highest titles in the whole entire country, and it's still the worst state for black people. But I know Trump did it. Trump did it. Yeah. All right, let's you know what they call that? that? What? That's what we call a fallacy. Trump did it. No, no it's, it's where you, you take something, something that's like, like a, it's, let's, let's see, which one, one is that? There's so many, Darna. That, 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 that wasn't a red herring. herring. That wasn't a straw man. Maybe, Maybe that was a straw man. man. But, but you try, try to divert the conversation by, by, by saying something that has no, no meaning whatsoever to it. That, except for the black people that are standing outside unemployed in Chicago at the highest black unemployment in the country. But I know, I know. I, I, what am I talking about? Let's take this soul plane over to Washington, D.C. Yeah, let's go to Washington. Because you know what? You need to go to Washington with that bull you talking about. Yeah, I need to go to Washington. You I'm going to pick at the White House. <laughs> go ahead, pick at the White House. Get your... Man, but will look. I be arrested, Amisha? <laughs> you know what? And, and on the live line is for with our DC update is Miss Amisha Cross. Amisha is so much going on today. We got Trump being acquitted. Buttigieg and Sanders are going toe to toe tomorrow in New Hampshire. What the hell happened to Joe and Elizabeth? Uh, Bloomberg's billions seem to be paying off. Uh, Democrat. I, I was watching the Oscars yesterday, and it seems like Democrats are now supporting John Bolton. And what will happen in, in the primary? Amisha, welcome to the morning. Welcome back. And tell us where you want to start. Amisha? Good morning. Good morning. Uh oh. My way to New York. So this is. It sounds like, uh oh. Sounds like you're in the airport with a lot of steel and concrete. On the train, actually. Okay, so you you get get by the get close to the window. <laughs> so did you hear us? Where are we at? Talk to me about the Trump acquittal. So as you know, last week Trump was acquitted on um, both of the articles of impeachment. And it wasn't a shock to anybody. Um, the Senate voted pretty much along party lines, with the exception of Mitt Romney. And Mitt Romney stood as the one who had the strongest um, the strongest support of himself when it came to speaking against President Trump and believing that um, that an acquittal would not be a good thing for him, specifically around him not having called any of the witnesses to testify. Now, I guess, so do you think, uh, Amisha, this is Mitt Romney setting himself up for the presidential election in 2024? Because we know Trump is running in 2020. I don't think it's Mitt Romney setting himself up for anything except um, a name played in our history books. At the end of the day, mm. Mitt Romney still has very large investments. Mitt Romney doesn't really have any. Looks like we're going to change. Uh, you know what, Amisha, you're zipping through the tunnels underneath the underground, and it seems like we can't seem to get you. Um, this is what I think we're going to do. I think that if we're not going to try one more time, if we can't get you stationary, then we'll do it next week, or we can call you later on this week to get the update. Amisha? All righty. Uh, are you there? Can we get you? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? I know the people looking at you and yeah, saying, like, it's, what it's, the it's what? It's really going, it's going in and out. Okay, so let's do yeah, this. Yeah, it's going in and out. Let's do this. Amisha's on the train in Washington, moving on the way up to New York. So we're going to move past Amisha. We'll catch up with her next week or sometime later on this week. But Amisha, we appreciate you. And you know you can catch her all the time at all things Amisha Cross. Hey, y'all. So we're going to go real quick. Uh, Todd, Trump was acquitted. Buttigieg and Sanders are now the front runners. What do you, how do you think that plays out? And this is what happens when Iowa starts. This one, so do you think Illinois should be the first state? 
uh, I've always thought that Illinois is so far back in the pack, by the time it, it came to us, the election was, was literally over. But do you think, so let me ask a question, do you think Illinois is the representative state for Democrats? Like, would this be a great place to start for Democrats? Uh, yes, it would. That's just being, you know, selfish. I guess I would love to see Illinois in the, um, I would love to see Illinois in the mix. Do you know how people complain about uh, the Electoral College and then somebody will say it's to keep the rural states and the small states? There is no state in the union that doesn't have a, a large farming community. So I don't get it. Well, I think this. I think that, um, I was saying this before, I know Democrats think that Illinois... Oh, oh, one more thing. And the, uh, that family business, there's very few farms that are family businesses right, in corporate right now. Um, but I was thinking about um, this Trump thing. I would like to see, Todd, um, in this in this race, I even know that I lost my thought. I lost my whole thought. Uh, Boone Gig and Sanders are the front runners currently. Uh, oh, I was talking about Illinois. I don't think that, I think that before Illinois, so let me say this. I think the first reason that JB is proposing Illinois moving to the front is because he wants to run in 2024 for president, right? And so what better place to start off than in Illinois, where you could take off and have a big lead because you would have all of that time to campaign. Clever, right? isn't he? Uh-huh, uh-huh. However, I think that before Illinois even thinks about trying to do, uh, be the first to call themselves a representative state for Democrats, they gotta do right by black people. Like, you know how you keep, you know, we, like we can agree that whether we like Trump or not, that, it has not been a good run for black people in Illinois. We've had a good run of black elected officials. That run of black elected officials has not really paid black people the dividends that we thought it would. Would you agree? Oh, uh, yes, I would. Um, and so I think that before the Democratic Party, because I'm going to tell you, they'll get you all hyped up. And they'll be like, woo, yeah, we're going to make it the first, and it's going to make it all great for us. But I want to remind you that the last gubernatorial election, $250 million got spent in Illinois. And guess what? They cannot still, no one has still demonstrated how black people got a million. Oh, I'm with you. We, we are, we're not part, we are not in any way part of the economy. But we are the ones who they're talking to. Right, and then they will put us up and all the Negroes will be in the commercial like, yes, Illinois wants the primary. Illinois wants the primary. Oh, and yeah, the we, Negroes there's a few actors. Chick, right, and they'll get chicken wings and french fries and while you know. Mike Bloomberg is spending billions. Man, you see how I many, this man is spending, did you, and did you see Bloomberg open up office and, and on the south side and open it up and put big old LGBTQ signs in the window? Really, where is it? Um, I'm gonna find out. I think it's. I right. got the fried chicken and potato salad. Because uh, you know how they do black people. Stop Chicago 1690. We'll be back. More of the morning show with Lee Jackson coming up. Hmm? But there's raisins in that potato salad. <laughs> raisins in the potato salad. I just want y'all to see this one more time. Before and after. Before Mays. After. They didn't even mess up. They even put it the same way. I just didn't have the perspective to do it. This stuff looks expensive. Where'd this come from? Sonia. She said you can have some. I'm not really a confection guy, but I'll open it. Don't open it if you ain't. Why open it if you ain't the person? Like, so she wants gonna, to eat one. Huh? She wants to eat one. So let her open it. There's a pleasure in opening the first one. She if you're gonna said open it. it was childproof. Did you see her struggling? She was just playing. She was struggling. Okay. Right, let me tell you, I don't like nobody open my newspaper before I do. I will buy you a newspaper. But don't crack mine before I read. Don't crack my magazines before I crack them either. I'm wrong, I'm eating one. Attorney London. <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry. I'm gonna talk about chicken. Pretty sure I had a thought, but it is gone. 
There you go, Todd. Talk to the people. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So I went to the eye doctor Friday. I had good news and bad news. The bad news was I don't see that well. The good news was I didn't see that well before I got there, so. <laughs> it's, it's the same prescription. But I'm getting contacts, which I don't know. Contacts in the old days used to make me uh, see better. Now it's not quite the same. Contacts are crazy now because they only do one or the other. Like I felt like I used to have contacts and I could read everything. Now it's like you got the contacts you can see far away, but you can't see close. Oh, to be honest, that's you. <laughs> that's you getting old and you need readers now. So yeah, I, I need reading glasses. So when I wear my contacts, and they're strong reading glasses. I mean, it's like a 1.75 and up. Attorney London. But I'll probably, I mean, I bought contacts anyway. And my glasses aren't up until November. So I'll just have to fly the head with these two pair I have from the last couple of years. <sighs> At least I didn't get worse. I was getting worse. <laughs> For a while. Y'all stay tuned till 8.30. What's happening? That's when we're going to talk about the assault. Oh. See, I think like this. No one learned the thing about never argue with a person who buys ink by the barrel. I know. Right? And it's like, I think it's crazy. Well, I'm going to save it up because I need it to go ahead. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, I need water now. It's time to start the show. Oh man! This is a trick! This can't need you in my life. Where do I go? What do I do? If I can't live without your love. Thinking of you makes me feel like I'm the hmm. Well, I want to be with you Girl, only you <laughs> Did you find Dorothy Tillman's clip? Dorothy Tillman's clip? <coughs> Every time I'm with you, never wanted to come to an end. Always make me no happy. Hey y'all, it's that time again of the year where you can express your love for someone special in your life. Todd, you know what my favorite line in um in uh Five Heartbeats is. Every night I got to prove my love. Remember when he was saying to the woman that he jumped into a fight with her? Remember that? Nah, she was sitting in the front row. I believe I've and she so fell long. she fell all out when they were singing. And he was like, every night I got to prove my love. Well, I'm going to tell you what. You want to prove your love? Then call the WVON love line. That's 773-336-3456. 773 And leave a message for your baby. Listen, February 13th and 14th for your special love message brought to you by Dakota Seafood located at 10754 Southwestern. You got to say, please, baby, 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 please, please, baby, baby, please, 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 boom, boom, boom. What you going to say, Todd, on your love message? I'm going to say, hey, baby. <laughs> hey, baby. Look, I'm going to make my sexy... Hey baby, this is your one and only Maze Jackson. Straight R and B, straight R and B. I wonder if that's gonna go well. R and B. I tell you what, it's gonna go well because I'm gonna practice it. It's Talk Chicago 1690 plus, y'all. You know what? It's I tell in my son all the time. Practice, practice, practice. Hey man, Todd. Plus, have you got your, you working on your crossover? Because you know the All Star Game is coming this week. I'm saving my crossover for for uh, Maze Junior. On Sunday. He is looking to ball you out. He he like that. He was looking, I showed him your pictures. He was like, that's him. <laughs> he was like, that's him. He said, Dad, you was going to give me some competition. I thought I was going to be working out. I'm going to 
old school Detroit uh, junior high hook shot him to death. I'm gonna tell you what, you better. You look, Ty gonna be doing them underhanded uh, free throws and stuff. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do a, a two handed chest shot. Oh man. <laughs> Hey, Todd. So we back. You know, my dad used to do that. Do two hand shot. Did he hit? He was uh, off and on. No wonder those guys only shot like thirty eight percent. Hey, um, Todd. Did you notice on the Oscars last night that uh, all of a sudden now, like the liberals are now loving um, John Bolton? How does that happen? Like John Bolton is the war hawkest of war hawks. Oh. And now all of a sudden, Brad Pitt was shouting him out like, oh. Did you see Failsafe? No, I did not see Failsafe. Dang it. What's Failsafe? Failsafe was a movie about uh, the Americans accidentally bombed Russia. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that work out? Yeah, and uh, so Henry Fonda was the president. <laughs> and uh, uh, Walter Matthau was the NSA. Wait! Advisor. Weren't they in the, um, weren't they in Some Like It Hot together? No, no. Walter Matthau and Peter Fonda? No, that was Tony Curtis oh, okay. and Jack Lemmon. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. But, <laughs> and he was a professor, uh, 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 Matthau, but he was such a hawk. And uh, that would be just like your guy. John Bolton. John Bolton wanted to go to war with everybody. He wanted to bomb everybody every time. And now all of a sudden. Once he, you start, they're like, we got to keep going. And, and, and. Everybody hated him when he was in the Bush administration. Now all of a sudden, he was his own man. Right, and now all of a sudden, you are watching um, him now becoming a Democratic hero. And I think John Bolton set everybody up so he can make a couple few billion on his book. Yeah, that was smart. Because you know all the white liberals who would never write, read his book, who would have thrown it away, are now like John. John Bolton's our hero because he could have saved us, saved the democracy. Crazy. All right, let's go to. Uh, you know what? Also. Dorothy Tillman, you I, so she did bring up something that I thought was kind of crazy. Like, should we disrespect the black people that Trump does honor? Right? Like, think about the black. Oh, disrespect them? Well, not no. disrespect. So, like, when the black kid came to, I honor them too. The black kid who was a, who wanted to be an astronaut, and the little black and the people, you know what I'm saying? You know How what? come the no black people didn't clap for him? He's still the president. See. That's thank you. That's all I'm saying. So all I'm saying is, I just Todd, don't trust. Him. I, I don't, and I don't trust now one of them. Can I tell you what? Pick, tell me the politician you trust. I think uh, uh, trust is a, such a tough word here. Mm -hmm. But who would I trust? I trust Bill Clinton. Mm hmm. So did Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> no, no, Monica's problem. She trusted that other lady. No, Monica's problem was she. That lady told all her business. No, what a real problem was. You wanna know what the real problem was? She was insecure. Love struck. Gulp. Talk. Sh That's Bill. I guess that was. <laughs> <laughs> also, what you hear from one side reflects the thoughts of the other side. Boy, I bet Bill Clinton in that dress. He was thinking to himself, "Like boy, boy, boy." You know, that's what courtesy gets you. <laughs> That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the phone line. Uncle Ruckus, you know what Chicago. This, this is a show. This is a family-friendly show. He hung up. Uncle, Uncle Ruckus, Ruckus hold up. up. Hung up. Is he there? Come on, Uncle Ruckus. Look here. Now, first of all, I'm going to cover a lot of ground today in a few times. I ain't got a lot of time because I got to go get to my job. I got more jobs than more black folk have. Period. So let's go. Let's, let's hit it real quick. First of all, man, I love your show. You're the only black show that I listen to because you make a lot of good sense here. Now, let's, let's talk about Harvey and the strippers. First of all, who wants to put people out of work? Donald Trump is putting people to work. But yet the Democrats want to put people out of work. We want to close down five strip clubs. Look at nice. Club old, okay. club play, okay. sugar babies. You want to close them all down. And you're going to put hard working Americans out of work. So I tell you, you're going to see what the Democrats do and come up. We will open up clubs and joints so you can go to work and feed your families. But the federal law, and I don't know why they're doing it. I don't know why they're doing it. We need jobs. The president is offering black folks an olive branch. Period. We have opportunity zones. We have the, 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 uh, the New Start Act. You need to get with Daryl Scott on your show. So he can talk to you about the things that we're doing. I am a Republican. I am not ashamed of that. I, and Todd, you should be a Republican. I don't know why you're over there. 
have a problem with joining us. You should join us, Tom. We need a person like you to come and bring black folks over to the promised land, negotiate a deal, and get black folks working and get money and jobs. That's what we talk about. We need to do here. Thank you, you Uncle Ruckus. Thank, thank you very much. much. I can and be Todd, an assistant uh, to uh, to one of the secretaries. I'm all in. Hey, Todd, and you know, I was just thinking this makes me think back. Was the Hollywood change. Shuffle? <laughs> was the Hollywood Shuffle? What was it? Uh, say what you want, and I'll tell you if you're right. Okay. Well, I was just gonna say, man, everybody gotta eat in this classic line. Go ahead, Sonya. The lady Z. I always gotta eat too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cakes. <laughs> Here's the song of Chicago, 1690. When we come back, Todd. Yes, sir. I got a personal problem, man. As I fight for black people, Minnesota. black people want to fight me. Oh, 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 Hey, man. Be cool, man. I got a wife. <laughs> Apparently, some show. people don't care. This is a family show, even though we told Monica she could have solved this whole thing. <laughs> but let me just say this. When we come back, we are going to talk about, you know, Todd. I feel like I have to share my experiences with the WVON family. And so I want to talk about how do you respond when you are physically assaulted by the staff of an elected official? If you don't know what I'm talking about, Third Ward Alderman staff, a staff person, uh, assaulted me while I was dressed up. Two in my, piece and a biscuit. Two, it wasn't two piece and a biscuit. It was an elbow. And what do you do when a woman attacks you? Talk Chicago, 1690. We'll, we'll be back. Boy, that's a good one. Step on her feet. Right, Chris Rock said, if your daughter come home and she got clear slippers, cl the, si the the sandals with the glass heels, you felt you failed. So Lunye, you know my thing is not the police, right? It's not the police. My answer is not to. I mean, you know how that ends up. I want to be dead, yeah, yeah. I think y'all, wake up y'all and give them a call at the office.
and real delicious honey. It's so they got the nature valley people looking. It's February. That means Valentine's Day is fast approaching. And if your money is a little funny. I did it first. Tips at nicorgas.com slash WVO. Doma T. Get our traffic and weather now. What? Doma T on the morning show? Big time, Willie. Big Willie. Doma T got time for the little people. Doma T, could you get me a um, true life crime on the assault of Maze Jackson from Dow Staff? <laughs> For the sucker Zodom ganked. From the N C H M O B and then J D. Stop, fool. Come on, let's beat ya. You fucking ass, Mark. Never got a gapple like that. Though. In the lynch mob, it's Jack and Four Beats. You are tuned in to the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. I'm my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, you are talking. We are, you know, it's top of the, it's not the top of the hour. It's the middle of the hour. You know what, Todd? Uh, can I tell y'all what? I think we got to do a rule book. I think we got to do a rule book on the All-Star Game. Like a visitor's guide to Chicago. Things to be on the lookout for. Right? If you see, like... I want to tell brothers right now, she don't like you that much. Right now. Right now. It's because it's going to be a lot of brothers coming in from out of town. Look, they're going to be at the club. They're going to be drinking. They're going to be dancing. It's going to be so many fine girls. They're going to be at the party like, what? They're going to be popping bottles. They're going to be like, she like me. No, she don't. Right? But I'm going to tell you, they're going to work you for them drinks. They're going to work you for them drinks. Work you for your stash. And now you know. Todd, the center of the universe will be right here. And I'm going to tell you, the NBA has been, done a very good job of trying to make sure that the game is accessible. That And, and you know what? NBA, we think of NBA All-Star Game, but we don't think about the NBA All-Star Weekend. And there is a weekend. That's right. It's a whole weekend. 
trend, man. And I'm gonna tell you the thing that I think that everybody needs to be checking out because some of the stuff is 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 expensive. But there are the the NBA has done a very good job of making accessible events, particularly this crossover, man. I'm looking forward to this because the NBA crossover, you got you can see people like uh, Kobe White, Gary Payton. Man, I can't wait to see Gary Payton. And you know Chicago's own Don C and Hebrew Brantley will be there. Now Don C did custom. Nikes, basketballs, Jordan gear. Matter of fact, did you know Don C did uh, Nike did some exclusive basketball uniforms? And guess what school they chose? What for high schools? Bolingbrook, <laughs> nationally ranked teams. I didn't know you know how it goes. Yeah, it's probably because there was a whole bunch of white folks. Um, plus, <laughs> you can check out current NBA players and legends. You can get your pictures. You can get your whole thing started. I'm gonna tell you. Uh, also, first of all, let me tell you what. If you want to know everything that's going on, download the NBA Events app. That way you can know everything. You can put your own schedule together. I'm going to do that. Plus, you can go to the NBA store. I found that uh, already. You can check out the Madhouse on Madison Team Store. I think I need to go down there and get me some, some all-star gear before. Well, I'm just going to walk on down. I'm going to walk on down top because, you know, you drive down Madison now. It's like it's giant posters. It's like big. You know what's so crazy about the United Center right now, though, is? What? As much as it's big and nationally focused as it is, Todd, it ain't no bulls on it. All them posters, all them pictures, because we ain't going to even be representing at our crib. You know, in the old days, they would, uh, they forced them to pick somebody from every team, no matter what. Well. Them days are gone. Them days are gone. Last time they was here, Michael Jordan was doing his thing. Okay, Todd. I, I want to talk to you. And the, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. This is just between me and you, okay? Me, you, and Sonya. Okay. Right? So, you all know that. First of all, you all know I'm a pretty vociferous advocate for black people. Vociferous advocate for black people who has always told you that I will never take a vow of poverty. But Todd... I told a guy that this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, oh, well, dang, I need to find somebody else. I look for poll workers. Anyway, Todd, this, this cha- the, the, the challenge that I have in fighting for black people oftentimes is it gets me into fights with black people. Like, remember when I was running for, um, when I was trying to audition, not audition, but trying to present my credentials for um, the 10th District State Representative, where I thought that, uh, you know I would not, you know if I went to Springfield, I'm going to talk the same way I talk. I'm going to be a vociferous advocate for black people. And then it was black people who came into the, came into my interview and disrupted it, Hell, video cameras did all that, and it was like, dang, dog. I mean, I, I'm, I mean, there's very few people. I'm not say there's very few, but you know, already they already know what the deal is with me. So I felt like, why do I have to battle? I, why is my fight more with black people than white people? Right? It's, it's like white people be like, oh, we, hey man, you know, if you talk to him, we better get us some black people answers. We did you get it together? We don't want them because they know what to expect. I can tell you half the reason is because there's, uh, there's always some paid assassins. Well, I'm going to tell you. I, Todd, have fought so for black folks. I, I, I'm, 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 and I think I'm pretty honest with you all when I have a client or whatever it is. I tell you that's what it is so that there's no... But it doesn't change the fact that I'm for black people. We don't right. always have to agree. Todd, the challenge for me is that like, I, I'm okay with people not liking me, for my opinions. Yeah, you better be. Um, <laughs> but I think it goes somewhere else when people physically attack. Mm-hmm. And I'm in somewhat of a conundrum. So let me, let me break down the story in case you didn't know. So this Friday, my wife and I uh, went put our suits and ties on and tuxedo and she had on her gown and we went to the first look for charity at the um, McCormick Place for the Chicago Auto Show. And while we were there, Todd, it was a great time, you know what I'm saying, we're having some drinks, etc. But you know, I'm clear that when I come into a room a lot of times, especially people who work for politicians, because people become undyingly loyal to their employers or whatever, they are angry with me because maybe I have taken their employer to task over an issue. And I'll be honest with you, over the last couple of years, just because Alderman Pat Dow has gone above and beyond to try and hurt me, my family, my wife, personally, all of that stuff, I had a vendetta. 
But just like Tony Preckwinkle, I said that if I'm going to try and bring black people together, I'm going to build, not break, right? And so even what I've been working on is even when I disagree with people, trying not to make it so that we can't have an open conversation. And I don't know if you remember, Todd, but during the cannabis um, the cannabis debate, Alderman Dow was one of the people who kind of helped the mayor stop the black participation. And at that meeting, we went behind the scenes and had a conversation in which, you know, we expressed some things. Like we didn't agree to agree. We didn't agree to agree. But I did say coming out of that conversation that I would not call her Rat Dow anymore. That I wouldn't um, go above and beyond to just go hard on her. Now, I still care about NTA. And I still care about the black folks, but I said I can do. Oh, I get read down. Okay, right. <laughs> but I, I was like, I can let all that go and just be civil now. And even after that, when I told people to call Alderman Dow's office, never did I ask them to call her a name, any of that. Just no, no. positive. Be positive. Advocate for yourself. So you know, I thought that I had come. You know, tried to say, okay, I'm gonna do a good faith effort, even when I was hot. So Todd, my wife and I are walking down the the aisle during the car show, and. And I see out of the corner of my eye Alderman Dow's staffer who greets people when they come in. I think her name is Allison Allison, something like that. Um, as we're walking, I see her and her boyfriend, fiance, or whoever, who also works in Alderman Dow's office, who actually started an altercation with Carrie and I probably two years ago at MV, um, which I brought up to Alderman Dow and Alderman Dow knew about it and said, oh, well, that's not what I heard. I heard you started. Now, let's just be clear. I don't put my hands on women. I'm not about to be in a fight with women. I'm not about to argue with women. As I'm walking, Todd, my wife is on my right hand side and on the left hand side, this woman, we're in the same path, but you know how the traffic is going in two different directions. Yeah. She reaches out and gives me an elbow and keeps walking. Now, for me, and I, I'm going to say that I tried to move over because I just didn't even want to be in close, but she moved over and her boyfriend, and they hit me with the elbow. Now, did it hurt? It didn't feel good, but it wasn't enough to stop me from, but I was upset because I'm like, dang, don't put your hands on me. Yeah. Let's talk about it when we come back because I don't know how I should deal with it. Everybody said, and then she tried to say, oh, Maze did. First of all, she tried to tell people because she knew she was bogus. She tried to tell people that I went out of my way to hit her. Now, Todd. See, that, see, I want to know how do I deal with this? And like, I'm a re I have an office in the third ward, and I feel unsafe as a constituent who has a business. I feel like the alderman could be malicious and go against and attack my business, attack me personally. Plus, her staff is physically assaulting me, and I was with my wife in my tux. How do I deal with that? Could y'all give me a call three one two three seven four eight one three zero? We'll be there. More of The Morning Show with Mays Jackson coming up. So everybody says call the police, right? There's only one way to deal with that, Mays. How is that? Police report. So I should police report. See, and so can you understand, and, and let me just be clear that... That will go farther than this. I got you. I got you. Yeah. But I feel no. Well, there's two things. But I feel like, honestly, going to the police is almost like the antithesis of who I am. Yeah. Right. Like so, I don't want. I don't like. I want to just be able to mind my business right. and walk. Go. How can you be at an event minding your business? And we went back to take a picture because Carrie was like, "Dang, this bra just." I want to know. Who is? One time I get it. Second time it's it's borderline harassment slash stalking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. That's how it ends. You can get an order of protection. Yeah. And so. That's how it ends. Okay. And just and oh, so I'm with you. It's just crazy to me. That I have to call the police. I had to, sorry, I had to chuckle at your woes when I read it on Facebook. I'm like, are you serious? I mean, I just think like, damn, I'm fucking at an event with my wife in a tux. 
bitch, you just came and put your motherfucking hands on me. Yeah. And it's like my wife is put into a precarious position because she like, well, I don't want my husband with hitting no woman. And at this, first of all, I'm not going to hit a woman. No, but still. But the girl is then trying to push me into a corner when you know she's trying to provoke me to do something. Right. Right? And so it's like, you know, and then we talked about this with Pat Dow. And Pat Dow was like, the last time, she was like, well, I heard about the last incident, but I heard that you did. Like, really? I'm at my own people's joint. Right. Like, and you're not, not going to do anything to put your wife into right, security, right. Uh, uh, physically or politically. And it's like, I feel like I got to wear a fucking body camera. Listen to what the answer is to this uh, they shit were, is. They were cracking me up. Like, wear a body camera. Like, really? I'm, I'm not trying to wear no body camera. I'm you know, saying. Higher security, have other people videotape every move, you know. That's, which are all ridiculous. Right. I did. Her name is Allison Allison. Allison Allison. What an interesting name. I'm just an addict addicted to music. Check it out. The better than to be in flight. I relax my mind and be at ease. And let this journey set me free. Set me free. And I spread my wings and fly away. To a place that I belong for And my heart will be A pathway Searching for love That's evermore I often wonder how I manage Always searching but not finding a true home Too far. The sky is calm. The stars are bright. What's better than to be in flight? I relax my mind and be at ease. And let this journey set me free. Set me free. Set me free. Whoa. You are tuned in to Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Got my co-host, Ty Strode. Ty, hey man, I don't mind people being disagreeable with me. I don't mind people disliking what I got to say. But keep your hands off me, Ty. I'm at the, I'm at the, I'm in a tuxedo. Tuxedo. My wife is in a ball game. I got automatic staff, third ward alderman. And it's like, and I brought this to the alderman before. She tried to tell me it was on me. Like, I'm, I'm just telling y'all I don't touch women. Period. But I don't know what I should do. It's like people are like, call the police, file the police report, X, Y, Z, A, B, C. And it's like, I, Mace Jackson, don't want to call the police on black people. I don't. You know, and Todd came in, white Todd. <laughs> hey, Mace, lock her ass up. <laughs> that, that'll stop it. And I'm saying, I don't want to be that guy. But it's like, I feel like, they keep on, you know, and you know, Pat Dow staff, you know, they tried to approach Carrie at the uh, African Festival of the Arts. Like a dude. Like on some, on some, right, 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 right. These are Afrocentric black people who are fighting for the people until, Todd, how do I, you know, let me go to the phone lines. Linda, you're on the top of Chicago. Ooh, how do I handle this? WVON Village. Morning. Listen, cameras don't lie. I'm pretty sure they was caught on camera some kind of angle way. And plus, your wife is a government official. They can't do that now. Uh, I think, do that can now. I tell you what? She got in Carrie's face when Carrie took the picture no, and no, then no, tried no. to step up to it because Carrie was like, look, I don't want to take no, a picture. you can't do that to government officials. Oh, no, she was like, what you want me to do? You want me to pose? You want no, me to no, take no. a picture? No, no, no. Like I said, cameras don't lie. 
Yeah. You got them on camera. The cameras don't lie. You know, I got to call the, uh, I got to call McCormick, please. Cameras don't lie. They want to be bad, show them how bad you can be. Show them what bad is. Thank, okay? Thank you, Linda. Thank, thank you, Linda. Let's go to Michelle. Michelle, you're on Top Chicago 1690. Hi, Tom. Hi, uh, Maze. Listen, you can't, you can't ignore this. Um, they're not allowing you to ignore it. You have to protect yourself and your family. And I, I agree with um, the first caller. You have to um, you have to document it with the camera. Anytime you come into a place with um, the, the Dow staff, um, I I would just document everything. I w and I would um, make a police report because I make police reports so people forget that I am black and that I inform them that I forget that they're black. Okay. So um, I, you know, I would do that. And number one, top my my imagination goes in crazy places. I remember when you, I mean, Maze, I'm sorry, when you had the issue, or when the issue was made out of your comment regarding our mayor, and um, and since um, Alderman Dot is a advocate, completely um, whatever of the mayor, I. My mind goes deeper. I, you know what? Maybe this is a response to your response to that that question. We can't ask questions regarding, um, you know, stuff that has to do with the mayor's lifestyle without be considered homophobe. So, I mean, number one, I believe that Pat Dow knows what her staff is doing, and I believe is sending a message that you don't mess with us or the mayor. In their mind, in their if in their little minds, you know. Mm. So that's my comment. Thanks, Michelle. I'll listen to what you're going to say. I appreciate it, Minister Hayden. You on top Chicago? God, I'm, I mean, uh, Mesa. Good morning to you. I'm sorry, here you're going mm -hmm. through that, but you can always go get the president's lawyers because they'll make it seem like did nobody see nothing, even <laughs> though they did it. They still got away with it, man. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Aiden. So, y'all, I'm going to tell you. I have had, over the course of the weekend, offers for people to do some of everything, Todd. Mm -hmm. And can I tell you what it is, what the challenge for me is? What is that? The challenge for me is that I want to be for black people. And even in the face of ignorance, I want to be able to stand tall. But... I don't feel like I should have to. I just feel like it's crazy that an elected official would allow their staff to physically know that they will put their hands on a person. And when I brought it to the alderman, she was like, well, that's not what I heard you did. It's like your staff is your representation. All I can tell you is from my experience, if a staff person of mine did something like that, then that's close to firing. I don't want to hear anything about this. I don't want to hear what you did, Mays. I don't want to hear what she did. If you did something, she walks away and she tells security. There's, there's none of this going back and forth and I'm going to get him. I, no. But, dog, you know she stepped to my wife, though. Like, she literally got her like she wanted to fight. And I'm just saying, y'all know my wife is graceful. You know my wife is going to stay away from stuff. But I'm just going to tell y'all, y'all. Small, too. Keep her out of fights. Hey, Amen. And that girl is not really small or cute. So, um... I guess my challenge now is, Todd, is like, you know, I'm going I'm to keep fighting for black people, but I'm going to tell y'all, I ain't going to keep fighting y'all to fight for you, right? And it's like, we got to have some discipline in our own community. I'm going to tell y'all, I've had every call for every offer to do everything from represent me legally to caskets. And I'm suggesting that that is not who I am. I am not trying to be in an altercation with a black woman, a black man, nothing, because there's too many white folks that we need to be fighting. But you ain't going to keep getting no points off of me. So, Alderman Dow, get your people before we do. It's Talk Chicago. So, for Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, for Miss Sonia Escobar, the musical conductor of the Soul Plane, for my co-host, George Stoger, I am the host of the WVON Morning Show every day asking the question, what's in it for the black people? If you want to know the address to the what's in it for the black people meeting tomorrow, it's 2907 South Wabash. You can get your what's in it for the black people window sign at the same time. And if you don't like it, you can still tell him. May said, we out of here. Peace.
What's better than to be in fly? I relax my mind and be at ease and let this journey set me free. Set me free. Wow.